I think we might be somewhat less than candid, however, if we said they had an outstanding defensive unit. They've yielded 415 yards of offense again when they're on defense. They're not very good right now. It ought to be interesting. E.T. thinks so. He's here, and so are we. We'll be back with the kickoff right after this message. There is a real attraction to these two ball clubs, the Iowa Hawkeyes and the Tennessee Volunteers. This, as a matter of fact, is the first time they have ever met. It's also the first time that Iowa has played in a bowl game other than the Rose, and it was a little warmer in Pasadena last year. We've been hit with the wintry weather here in Atlanta, 41 degrees, a, a humidity of 69%, the wind out of the northwest at 8 miles per hour. The forecast calls for a 50% chance of rain, but uh, with some good fortune, it should not hit us until the latter stages of the ball game. There's a look at Hayden Fry, sunglasses and all, and his quarterback, Chuck Long. The Iowa Hawkeyes have won the toss, and they have elected to receive. They will be going from right to left here in the first quarter. J.C. Love Jordan and Ronnie Harmon will be the deep man, and there's a second-team All-American place kicker, Fuad Reves, a sophomore from Miami, Florida, who has had, to put it mildly, an unbelievable season. 27 of 31 field goals for the year. He made the second-team All-American squad behind Chuck Nelson of Washington. The deep receivers are J.C. Love Jordan and Ronnie Harmon. That's Love Jordan to the left, number 15. Ronnie Harmon, number 31, is to your right. Settle back, enjoy it. The first of a full weekend of college and NFL football, live on CBS. We've got the Peach Bowl today, the Cotton Bowl tomorrow, then the NFL doubleheader coming up on Sunday afternoon. And a part of the crowd of 60,000 or so who have bought tickets to this encounter. will be Ronnie Harmon, a freshman at the five. To the 25-yard line, first down and 10, Iowa. Offensively, they'll open with Chuck Long at quarterback, Norm Granger and Owen Gill in the backfield, Ronnie Harmon and Dave Moritz are the wide receivers. The offensive line, the tight end, Mike Hufford, Tim Hanna, Joe Lovellis, Joel Hilgenberg, Lauren Gerleman, and Brett Miller, perhaps the best of the offensive line. There's a look at Tim Hanna, who is a late-minute addition to this uh, starting lineup, number 68. And Chuck Long, he's a sophomore from Wheaton, Illinois. They will go from the eye with Granger, the short back. Owen Gill, number 33, two tough yards. Tackle made by Carlton Peoples, number 19, and Chris Wampler, number 77. Defensively, Tennessee lines up in a 5-2. Mike Terry, Mike Castile, Steve Kluge, Chris Wampler, and Mike Cooper are the front five. The linebackers, Duan Henry and Joe Cooper, they are both freshmen. And the defensive secondary, another freshman, Tommy Sims, Carlton Peoples, Bill Bates, an all-SEC performer, and Joe Cozart. Vince Campbell has come in at a wide receiver now for Iowa. A good look at Chuck Long on second down and seven. Cost him five yards. Twenty-five second clock elapses, and it'll be a second down and twelve, Iowa. And let's listen to our referee. Touch away, Gene. Offense, second down. James Darby, our referee, the officiating crew today from the ECAC, the East Coast Athletic Conference. Long still has it, play fake, pops it out, man wide open, his tight end, Mike Hufford, first down at the 38-yard line. There's a kid who came in weighing 186 pounds, and he's playing now at 248. It's a gain of 15, we'll look again. One of the strengths of the Iowa offense is the ability to throw the medium-range pass. Chuck Long will go to Hufford, number 86, the tight end. As Vern said, a kid that's built himself up, gotten stronger in his career, and is an exceptional player. The problem with Tennessee, they've been very porous on defense. They've given up too much cushion, too much yardage. Johnny Major says he's going to go recruit some defensive players. First down, 10 on Hufford's 15-yard catch. Ball at the 38-yard line. Pitch out Owen Gill. He's a kid who was born in Jamaica. And he moves it up with a rumble-like run to the 44-yard line. 
Joe Cooper, the freshman linebacker, number 42 with a tackle. Gill has been one of the real keys for them. Here's the uh, officiating crew today. James Garvey, Ron Clages, George Hill, Michael Stark, Joe Reichwein, and Gene Sturator. Again, they are out of the ECAC. It'll be second down and a need of about three. Second down and three. Iowa has moved the ball here in the opening stages of the Peach Bowl for Atlanta, Georgia. Hufford lines up tight to the right side. They tried to counterplay to Owen Gill, and that time the volunteer defense snuffed it out. Mike Cooper, one of the captains, number 93, made the tackle. Vince Campbell runs the play in, number 85. There's a look at Mike Cooper, 6'5", 227-pound senior, who was a second-team selection of the All-SEC squad this year. Really had a terrific year. He has been the most consistent of the defensive front five for Tennessee. Three wide receiver offense now on third down. And long back to throw. He's being pressured, fires it out left side, it's caught. It may be enough for the first down, see where they mark the ball. Carlton Peoples defending. Dave Moritz with the catch, number five. Move the chain, he got a first and ten. That time, Chuck Long was able to take advantage of Bill Bates' strong safety, number four. He was down the bottom part of your screen. He went on the blitz. They took advantage of the vacated area. Gave him a big first and ten play. Long has completed 64% of his passes this year. Now Hubbard and Granger both come to the left side. Numbers 86 and 26. Owen Gill comes weak side. Breaks one tackle. Bangs out a couple of yards before Dewan Henry, one of the two freshman linebackers, makes the tackle. Gill is a sophomore who makes his home in Brooklyn, New York now. Born, as we said, in Jamaica, moved to London for a couple of years, and then his family moved back to uh, the Brooklyn area. 6'2", 212 pounds. Played rugby over in England. Be used to this kind of weather, Steve. It's amazing he wasn't recruited by Cal. That's right. Gill again. Hit. Still manages to get about four yards. Chris Wampler and Steve Clues, 95 and 77, make the tackles. Iowa's doing the very thing they were wanting to do, and what Tennessee was most concerned about is the ability of Iowa just keep hammering away, coming inside, and taking advantage of their tremendous strength in their offensive line against a reasonably suspect defensive front of Tennessee. Gill has carried 17 yards on four carries now. This will be a third and two, third and three. Play fake, has a man open, caught, first down, 435-yard line, the catch made by Owen Gill. The Hawkeyes are moving the ball. And taking advantage of the middle range pass, that's Chuck Long's string, rollout pass this time, he's got everybody movement, a lot of cushion. Juan Henry, number 39, the freshman linebacker, made the tackle. This has been an Owen Gill show thus far. First and 10, Iowa. Draw play. Norm Granger, the fullback. He fights for yardage down to the Tennessee 30-yard line before Carlton Peoples, the quarterback, number 19, makes the tackle. Granger missed one game with an injury this year. He has played both tailback and fullback. He's a sophomore out of, uh, or rather, a junior out of Newark, New Jersey. 5'11", 215 pounds. Kind of reminiscent in size of Robert Newhouse. Although Newhouse is uh, going to get the stretching machine to go to 5'11". Second down. Five. Long's going to be hit and dropped. Got him at the 40. Bill Bates, the senior captain of the Tennessee Volunteer Defense, a four-year starter. Tennessee was going to try to give Chuck Long a lot of different looks and sets. That's Bill Bates, a strong safety. If Long would have been able to anticipate Bates, he would have been able to drop the ball off to that weakened area because Bates vacated it. But that time was a big play for Tennessee. So we have seen the Volunteers blitz for the first time. It'll be third down, Long, third and 13. Third and 12, officially. Two wide receivers come wide left, split backs, and Mike Hufford, the tight end, stays in a stand-up position. Long wants a screen pass. He's going to have to hurry, and he eats the football at the 46. Reggie White, number 92, 
who was a preseason All-American and has had, quite frankly, a disappointing season. He's been hampered with injuries, but he makes his presence felt here in the first quarter. Watch the secondary. They get good drops. They analyze. The ball is flooded. They flood the zone to the left. Right there, Chuck Long's trying to find somebody open. Good defensive play by both White and Kofer put pressure on him. Number one kicker in the country, Reggie Roby, hangs it very high, angles it out of bounds in the near side, somewhere around the 25-yard line. There's a young man who averaged 48.1 yards per kick this year. But the Iowa Hawkeyes give up the ball. A couple of sacks, and Tennessee has it. We have the ball against Iowa, I think, without question. We'll have to have a certain semblance of decent running. I don't think we can wear them out in the running game because they're so physically strong up front. I think our success will be built around low turnovers like we've had all year and a good, short, intermediate uh, passing game. Defensively, we've got a very difficult job in containing the great speed of the University of Tennessee wide receivers. Even her tied in is a world-class sprinter. So we're going to disguise, camouflage our defensive coverages, mix up the blitzes and the stunts to try to keep Cockrell, the Tennessee quarterback, off balance. If we can do this successfully, I think we'll do all right. Well, we'll get the first test of that right now. The Volunteers have the ball at their own 27-yard line. First down, 10, Allen Cockrell is in the cockpit of quarterbacks. Split backs behind him. Two wide receivers wide left, one is wide right, and Cockrell will throw on first down. Little flip out to the left flat. Caught by Chuck Coleman, and it works for a gain of about eight. Coleman, the leading running back for the Volunteers this year, and has also been one of their prime candidates out of the backfield. Take a look at the Volunteers starting lineup now. Alan Cockrell is the quarterback. He's just a sophomore. Joined by an Oklahoman, Doug Furness, Chuck Coleman, Daryl Wilson, and Willie Galt. They can fly. Kenny Jones, the tight end, Kurt Singer, Mike Furness, Glenn Streno, Bill Mayo, and John Matthews complete the offensive 11. Second down at the 31-yard line. Cockrell will throw it again. He wants it short, and it's incomplete. Fired it a little bit too hard. Intended again for Coleman, but let him about a foot too much. Hayden Fry, his defensive unit, perhaps the key to their success this year. Tony Wonkett, Mark Ports, Dave Brown, Clay Ulenhake, and Dave Strobel. The linebackers just behind the front five are James Erb and Mike Yakulo. And in the defensive secondary, Keith Hunter, Zane Corbin, Bobby Stoops, and all Big Ten selection, and Ron Holly. Third down, five. Cockrell, one for two. Wing set to the left side. Two wide receivers are wide left. One is wide right. Iowa adjusts defensively, and Cockrell will throw. Into the flat it goes. Could have been picked off. That's a one-hopper. It's incomplete. Bobby Stoops got over there quickly and almost picked it off, and the Iowa Hawkeye defense is held. Johnny Major's not too pleased. I think what that particular series showed you is that Tennessee's extremely concerned about the ability to run the ball, and so that's why they were dropping it off, trying to give a little bit of a controlled passing attack. Here's the number two kicker in the country. We've got a great twosome of kickers today. Jimmy Colquitt, 46-9 average. Ron Holly has only returned it for a 2.8-yard average this year. That has not have been a strong suit for the Hawkeyes. What a kick by Colquitt. Fair catch, Holly at the 15-yard line. That's a 53-yard kick and a hang time of 4.6. So the first round of the punting duel goes to Jimmy Colquitt over Reggie Roby, but Iowa does have the ball. When we have the football, we're going to really probe and explore the Tennessee adjustments to the various multiple formations that we run. Uh, I guess you might say we'll probably have a balance attack between the run and the pass early in the ball game until we can really evaluate what they're trying to do defensively against our attack. When Iowa has the ball, I'm very concerned about their tailback offense. They're very good on the, on the power sweeps and the counter trap off tackle. I'm also very concerned about their short control passing game that Long does such a good job of using. The last thing is their full back cutback play, which has been most effective for them. Move the ball the first time they had it. They've got it for the second time now, and Mike Hufford adjusts and goes to the right side. It's first and ten at the 16-yard line. No score, 7.20 to go first quarter. Owen Gill bangs up a right tackle, picks up a quick six. Tackle is made by the freshman linebacker, Dewan Henry, number 39. Gill, when Eddie Phillips became injured in the seventh game of the year, really came on strong, Steve. He really did. He, he had 
have to. They really did not, without him, they didn't have the kind of running game that they really needed. Phillips had an exciting year. He was second team all Big Ten and really made the difference. And yet Chuck Long has been the guy that's been the steady guy that's pulled it all together when everybody else has been going to play with injuries. Second down at the 21-yard line, second and four, no score in the game. This will be Gill trying to get to the outside, breaks it loose. He's got to get one more block, and he can go for a bunch, but the tackle is made at the 35. Tommy Sims, number 16, Joe Cozart, number three, make the tackle, but Owen Gill picks up 14 yards. Again, the size of the offensive line of Iowa really, well, they will be able to control Tennessee if they just keep hammering at them. That time, outside, off tackle of, of uh, the block of Hannah, number 68. Gill breaks into the secondary. The number two rusher on the football team and has had an outstanding year, and he's running crazy today. Fourth first down for the Hawkeyes. Six for 37 so, so far for Owen Gill. Long will throw this after a play fake. Nobody open. Looks for alternate receivers and goes deep. There's more. It's wide open at the 35. Watch the play. It's a simple little roll pattern, and then he comes inside. He looks for the open area. The ball was not thrown on time. He broke into the secondary. That's Carlton Peoples, number 19, gave him the cushion. Dave Morton makes a big play. He's a junior out of Chicago. That's his 34th catch of the year. It's first down, 10 Hawkeyes, the 35 of Tennessee. Granger shifts into his short man uh, fullback position, and Owen Gill gets the handoff. This time, a tough two yards of a right guard. Bill Bates made the tackle. Steve talked about the offensive line of Iowa, and they are huge hunks of beef. 275 for Brett Miller, 255 for Lauren Gerleman, 240 for Joe Hilgenberg, the center, 280 for Joe Lavellis at left guard, and 255 for the current left tackle, Tim Hanna. That's a lot of muscle up front. Yeah, and it's going against, again, some young men in Tennessee that have been plagued all year with a power game, and they've given up a lot of yards. Chuck Long, just a sophomore. It's second down, seven. Long on the option play, and they don't run that that much, and that may be one reason why. There's Smokey. That is, I have learned, a blue tick coon hound. And it's the official mascot of the University of Tennessee. That's Smokey number five, as a matter of fact. He looked like he was in a poised position ready to go, didn't he? <laughs> That's right. Third down, eight, no score in the game, 4.45 remaining first quarter. Iowa and Tennessee in the Peach Bowl in Atlanta. Long in the reverse. Ronnie Harmon, the wingback, who started the season as a, as a running back, and that time it was sniffed out by Joe Cofer, number 42. Ronnie Harmon, number 31, who carried the football, made an excellent transition from the running back spot. Tennessee really is trying to do too many things right now on defense. They're giving Iowa a lot of different sets. Iowa just continues to come right at them with their power game. That time a little razzle-dazzle, which we'll see a lot of today, probably. This is Tom Nickel. They refer to him as their pooch punter. Inside the 50, Nickel kicks it, not Reggie Roby. And he gets it very high and will try and angle it out of bounds, and it's gonna be down inside the five-yard line. Tom Nickel, who is the place kicker, and Glenn Bugs was down there to down the ball. So it's a battle of field position here in Atlanta, and Tennessee does not have the best of it right now. Both coaches, Johnny Majors and Hayden Fry, stress field position and the kicking game. And Steve, we've seen an example of how important the kicking game could be already. When you're exchanging such large areas of real estate, Iowa started off the ball game at the minus 25, their own 25. And then they punted the length of the field. Tennessee got it at their 27. Then exchange of punts again. Iowa got it back to the 15. Tennessee, they we're just going back and forth. And really, the frustration is, is that Tennessee has not had the ability, at least proven it all year, to be able to establish a long drive. That's been their frustration. Iowa's a more patient team, and they have an advantage when they're exchanging large chunks of real estate. At this time, the Volunteers start the ball at their own eight-yard line, an end zone view of Alan Cockrell, along with Doug Furness, the fullback, and Chuck Coleman, the tailback. Hawkeyes adjust defensively. First down, 10. Cockrell in the dive play. At left tackle, it's the fullback, Doug Furness, a transfer from Northeast Oklahoma A&M. He and his brother Mike, both starters offensively. Mark Bortz, the all-conference defensive tackle, makes the stop for Iowa. Furness rides uh, 
rides bulls or did for a while back home in Commerce, Oklahoma, close to your hometown of Tulsa. Yeah, that's not a real uh, healthy uh, hobby to get into. <laughs> well, he's given up the bulls and gone to power weightlifting now, and he's the National Collegiate Power Weightlifting Champion. Gain of three, second down, seven. Cockrell with the option, pitches out. There's a fumble, first of the game, but it is recovered by Tennessee. One of the keys for Chuck Coleman and the Tennessee offense, as Tony Wonkett makes the tackle number 92, is that they have only lost eight fumbles in 11 games. This is not part of the uh, trend of Tennessee. They have not run the option play that much. They ran it this time. It's obvious they've not run it very much. The ball, Coleman dropped the ball on a good pitch by Cockrell. They're trying to mix it up a little bit to hopefully soften up the middle of the game, keep those people on the inside guessing so they can establish some semblance of running game, as Johnny Major said, then to be able to run their offense. Third down, six. Ball at the 12. Coleman under pressure. Got him. Now they will really need the help of Jim Colquitt. Clay Ulenake, number 73, and Tony Wonkett, number 92. This is a very strong Iowa front five, as we have seen already. They led the Big Ten in total defense and the ability to stop the rush. One of the defensive coaches excited about what his team's done. They are very strong on defense. Now, against LSU earlier this year, Colquitt kicked it from about this spot, 53 yards out beyond the 50. He can really drive it deep. His uncle, Craig Colquitt, now with Pittsburgh. Here's the kick. It's a good one. But it will be returned by Ron Holly. And it's field position, Iowa. They've got the ball at the 48-yard line. Let's watch the sack by Ulenek, number 73, and Wonkett, number 92. Really not very good field position to be able to throw the football. Cockrell gets in trouble. They have to turn it over. We got a nothing, nothing ball game. We're not going to leave. CBS is throwing a party tonight, and you're all invited. Happy New Year, America. There's something for everyone, from Donny Osmond to Jerry Lee Lewis to Eddie Rabbit, plus much more from all around the country. Be here for Happy New Year, America, tonight, 11.30 Eastern on CBS. Chuck Long brings him up, ball at the 47. We have no score, 2.27 to go first quarter. Long perfect thus far today. Hufford comes tight to the left side. Pitch out, Owen Gill. Got Granger in front, good defensive play, fumble, Tennessee. Volunteers have the ball. Lavoisier Fisher, a freshman out of Nashville, number 49, made the recovery. I believe one of the cornerbacks, either Sims, number 16, or Peoples, there's Peoples, number 19. He takes on the lead blocker. That's part of the play. And then 92, Reggie, Reggie White. White, is the one that made the fumble. It was the great ability of Carlton Peoples to take on the lead block, to force the runner inside, then the good stick by Reggie White. High formation on first down 10. Volunteers, as far out as they have been, will throw it deep. If Cockrell has time, he does. Incomplete. He had to freelance the play because of the heavy pressure. It was intended for Willie Galt, and Ron Hawley was back there defending. Hawley, of course, who gained national recognition when he ran into the goalpost at Michigan State and knocked it down. Turnovers, both teams are in a plus territory this year. Iowa's defense has always been opportunistic to being able to create 33 takeaways, and that's given that plus nine, really. Tennessee, they've struggled a little bit more. Alan Cockrell is one out of five for only five yards. Total offense has been one yard for Tennessee thus far. But they've got field position now on a second down and ten. Here comes the rush. Cockrell's buried. Rolls it out on the reverse to Chuck Coleman. Coleman has blockers in front. Down the sidelines. And finally caught at the 14-yard line. Watch, Steve, as George Little, number 77, gets the pressure. Chuck Coleman really makes a great play. George Little, as you said, put the pressure on. There's a great block right there. It looked like it was by Kenny Jones, the tight end. So, and being able to just use his blocks and use his speed and get down the line of scrimmage. Look at that. That's a 36-yard gain for Coleman. First down at the 14 in the scoreless first quarter. Three wide receiver offense for the Volunteers. Option play, left side, Coleman. 
Mayo, no gain. Dave Strobel, a junior from St. Paul, Minnesota, number 97, made the tackle. There's a look at the 6'4", 235-pound defensive end. Made an honorable mention list for the Big Ten this year. On the previous reverse play, again, it was the pressure of George Little, number 77, that really almost caused the play to collapse. But then the great block by Kenny Jones that sprung it and gave Tennessee the position they've got right now. Second down and 10. Mike Miller comes wide to the right side. Kenny Jones is also flipped wide right. Pitch out. Coleman hit behind the line, shakes the tackle. Wiggles down to the six-yard line. That'll be a yard short of the first down. Ron Hawley made the tackle. Number 19. Here's the angle that the strong safety probably is seeing. It's just a pitch sweep turn cut back inside behind the block of Mike Furnish, number 63. It gets into the secondary. Good, solid running. Now Tennessee's mixing, mixing up the offensive plays, keeping Iowa off balance. Third and two. And the ball at the six. No score. 21 seconds to go first quarter. Counter lead option. Cockle keeps. Cockle scores. what they think if Tennessee would run the option play. The Iowa coach said they won't run it. They've not run it all year. Cockrell uses his good instinct ability. Goes inside one at number 92, the defensive end for the touch. Sophomore quarterback has put Tennessee on top. They convert the fumble recovery and go 50 yards. Now, Fouad Reves will try and tack on the extra point. He's been perfect all year, and he extends the string. Tennessee gets the first turnover of the game, and they have converted it, helped in large measure on a 36-yard reverse from Chuck Coleman down to the 14-yard line, and they take a lead of 7-0. Well, we've got a heck of a game going here, and tomorrow there's going to be another one. Overcast day, 41 degrees, but it's hot inside Atlanta Fulton County Stadium with a sellout crowd on hand. Reves, a sophomore who was born in Bogota, Colombia, and played his high school ball in Miami, Florida. Not much more to say about that. Here's a look at Alan Cockrell. For the touchdown, opportunistic offense. That's got to be a pleasure for Johnny Major to see that. He's not seen it during most of the season. Reggie White caused the fumble. Chuck Coleman ran for 36, and Cockle got the touchdown from six yards out. First down, 10, Iowa at the 20. Double wing set. Hand off to the fullback, Norm Granger. Door is closed. About 11 orange shirts around him. It'll be second and ten. And that could be the final play of CBS on New Year's Eve afternoon. Seven nothing. Tennessee has the lead. Iowa with a second down and ten. Long will throw. Quick screen left side. Caught by Dave Moritz. Gets a couple of blocks and uh, is knocked out of bounds near the eight-yard line by Lavoisier Fisher. First name is L-A-B-O-I-S-I-E-R. Parents must have had an interest in chemistry. The stats really reveal what we anticipated. Iowa controlling the football, the one critical turnover, the fumble gave Tennessee the opportunity to go get the seven points they've got. But Iowa's doing exactly what they want to do. Keep the ball away from Tennessee. Just control it, be patient all day long. And that's their trend. That's what they do best. Third down, four. Hawkeyes trail, seven nothing. Chuck Long is five out of five throwing the ball. As a man open, caught by Vince Campbell, a senior from Palachucha, Florida. Palachua, Florida. Carlton Peoples makes the tackle, and that should be enough to move the chains. It is.
this time Chuck Long checks out of the play that he had called. He read the coverage. Tennessee's trying to mix it all up. Good ball throw out and away from the defender, so it's a good place to throw the ball. Vince Campbell makes the catch. Sixth first down. Notice that Mike Hufford, the Iowa tight end, stands up, and Chuck Long wants to call timeout and talk it over with Hayden Fry. The Tennessee defensive coaches really felt like they could take advantage. Most of the offensive yardage, and they've got a first down 10 at their own 33. Long will throw good blocking. Now he'll run it, which he can do. Johnny Williams, who's come in at nose guard, number 46, made the tackle for Tennessee. Coach has described Chuck Long as a young man that has deceptive speed. Again, any thrower that has the ability to get outside and put pressure, look at the defensive backs. They don't know what to do. They don't know whether to come forward or stay back for the pass. And that is the threat when you've got a quarterback that's able to run the football and put pressure on the perimeter secondary backs. Second down, short. Owen Gill tries to work for yardage. Reggie White was one of those, I think, who stood him up, number 92. And I don't know if he got enough for the first down or not. They may have to call the chain out. Tennessee has adjusted now some defensively, and they've got some fresh faces in there. Johnny Williams, Reggie McKenzie is in at a linebacker. Lavoisier Fisher, Mike Castile, Mike Kofer, Reggie White, and Mike Terry up front. James Garvey, our referee. Again, the crew is out of the ECAC, and there is Johnny Majors. Hard to believe that as a high school football player at Huntland, Tennessee. In his career, he scored 565 points as a tailback. He is a favorite son of Tennessee. Very well thought of. And of course, one of the four boys and one daughter is Shirley Majors. Outstanding coach. Here's the quarterback keeper by Long, and I believe he got enough for the first down. They will stop the clock to see if indeed Long picked up enough for it. 7-0 ball game if you just tuned in here on New Year's Eve afternoon. That's good to move the chains. And Iowa gets its seventh first down of the uh, ball game. I cannot believe the number of Iowa fans who have made the trek down here from that great state. They sold something like 22,000 tickets to the Iowa contingent. And they were having a party in our hotel late last night and very early this morning. First down and 10. Long gets a good block, goes deep. Morris is open. That'll be six. number 26 who got the block that allowed long time to get it up Tom Nickel will try and tie it up and he's done so a 57 yard pass from Chuck Long to Dave Moritz we have notched it up here in Atlanta Georgia the Iowa Hawkeyes seven the Tennessee Volunteers seven back with a kickoff in a moment there's Carlton Peoples, number 19, on the blitz. That causes the secondary to go man-to-man. -man. Number three, Cozart will fall way behind too quick because he's man coverage. Moritz just takes the length of the field. Granger picked up the block of the blitz. Caesar. He's also in the record books in 1980 with a 100-yard kickoff return. The man has 9-2 speed. Roby hangs it very high. Galt at the four. No touch this time. He gets it out to the 26. And the tackle is made by George Little. There's Dave Moritz. 33 catches for the day. That was an 80-yard drive in seven plays. It took only 236. We are tied at 7-7. Tennessee felt like coming in the ball game that they had to take some chances because they are suspect. Coach Majors was very candid with us yesterday at breakfast and shared with us that we've just given up too many yards. We're not a typical Tennessee football team that bases it its strength on defense. Tennessee has been to a lot of bowls. Iowa, not that many. 
This is only the fourth bowl appearance for Iowa. There's Johnny Jones, who has come in at tailback now, replacing Chucky e. Coleman, wearing number 33. And Dave Brown, the nose guard, number 59, made the tackle. Jones, a sophomore from Munford, Tennessee. He's picked up 421 yards for the season, alternating with Chuck Coleman. Coleman uh, really uh, just assumed the starting spot after the season began. How about them balls, huh? Second down, eight and a half. And Cockle beats the rush, flips it out, caught by Jones. But he is buried for no gain. Larry Station, a freshman linebacker who was injured late in the season, made the tackle, and Cockrell looks it over. Johnny Major's looking on. Now 47 years of age, his career record, 92-74-4. and four. Started out at Iowa State as his first head coaching job after he left the staff of Frank Broyles at Arkansas. Then, of course, the marvelous years at Pittsburgh where they won the national championship behind Matt Cavanaugh and Tony Dorsett in 76. Third down, eight. Cockrell looks back to his right, fires it deep, man is open, caught. Catches Clyde Duncan, a junior out of Oxon Hill, Maryland, number 24, a gain of 22 yards. That's only his sixth catch all season. The Iowa coaches have told their athletes, their defensive secondary backs, to be sure and give Tennessee receivers plenty of cushion. They've got such tremendous speed. And Clyde Duncan's also in that group. The coaches believe he's the kind of the receiver of the future, but just the threat of being able to run so far so fast is really something that's going to give Tennessee opportunity to throw the ball. Ball at midfield, 7-7 game, early moments of the second quarter. Cockrell with a dive play right this time. Look at the hole. And Johnny Jones rips it over right tackle. He split Bill Mayo and John Matthews. And they went right at Mark Bortz, the all-Big Ten defensive tackle. Holding, though, will wipe it out and bring it back. It's our first, uh, second penalty of the game. We had to delay a game call earlier. Majors has not coached against Hayden Fry in a head coaching capacity, but uh, very familiar with Coach Fry's tactics when Hayden was the uh, head coach at SMU. And Johnny was an assistant at Arkansas. Here's the call. Got offensive holding. Repeat first down. James Garvey, our referee. There's a look at Hayden Fry. What a job he has done at Iowa. First time they've ever been in back-to-back -back bowl games. The Rose Bowl last year. Peach Bowl this time. His fourth year. And he turned it around at North Texas State after he left SMU where he coached for 11 years. First down and 10. Cockrell. Look at that. The old tennis of the old Utah play. The, the wingback pass. It doesn't work. Chuck Coleman got the ball, but Clay Eulenhake, number 73, made the tackle. The old shovel pass. This is a pass. If it falls incomplete, that's what it, it would not be a fumble. If he dropped it, it would be just incomplete pass. There he is trying to read the play. Nothing. Too smart, too physical in the defensive line there of Iowa. Not enough blocking up front for Tennessee. Well, on the day that the Bear got his 312th win, I saw them use that play against Auburn. It went for a touchdown, so they still use it periodically. Second down and a bundle. And Cockrell will drop back and look deep left side. Man is open. Overthrown incomplete. He had his receiver down there. Willie Galt, number 26. But it was a bit too high. Again, watch the cushion of Iowa. They've got to give it to you because he's got such great speed. He just wants to turn inside, then back outside. Turn the defender. Five yards away is the defender. But if you had that kind of speed, 4-2 in the 40. A world-class sprinter. You see, record in the 100-meter and the 110-meter high hurdle. He can go fast. And one of three on this team who flat flies. Golf will leave the field now. Third. Watch out, the blitz is coming. Man is open again, but it's going to be short of the first down. Catch is made by Daryl Wilson. He's another of the tracksters, number 87. Senior out of Bristol, Virginia. Devin Mitchell makes the tackle. Of the three speedsters, he's probably the best receiver of the bunch. Daryl Wilson, number 80, 87. Again, look at the cushion they have to give. There's a linebacker trying to make a play. That's Irv, James Irv. 
A lot of cushion. Now if Alan Cockrell can read and understand they're going to give him a lot of cushion, all he's going to do is complete those passes. Jim Colquitt is on there. John Warren, he is the Tennessee pooch punter. They both have him. Inside the 50, they use the pooch punter, and Warren's had a terrific year. Four of his 12 kicks have been down inside the five. Let's see what happens to this one. Look at it. It's going to happen again. Down to the 11-yard line. Well, it wasn't inside the five, and Warren's a little unhappy. But it wasn't a bad kick. 36 yards on the punt. A hang time of 3.9. Tennessee has pushed Iowa back to the 11-yard line. In 1956, Paul Horning won the Heisman Trophy. Know who finished second? That man walking away from you. Right there, John Majors, All-American tailback in Tennessee. He was the number two balloter in the 1956 Heisman Trophy race to the Golden Boy. Iowa's got the ball deep in their own territory at the 11th. Pitch out left side to Eddie Phillips. He makes his first appearance in the game. Phillips, a junior out of Chicago, was on his way to a thousand yard season when he hurt a knee or an ankle rather and gave way to Owen Gill but he's healthy now and he's back in there 6'1 202 pounds Mike Terry number 28 and Castile's got some kind of a I don't know what that is looks like a clothes hanger Steve keep his, <laughs> keep his neck <laughs> Second down, and off to Phillips, and he fights for yardage out near the first down marker. Bill Bates made the tackle, number 40. I'm not at all sure what that was on Castile's back. Take a look at it from the end zone. Joe Cooper, the freshman linebacker, number 42, stepped into the hole, then stepped himself right out of it as Eddie Phillips is able to go to his vacated spot. Young linebackers, their whole group of six deep linebackers, they only have one player that's more than, well, they only have one junior. They're all sophomores and freshmen. Looks like a roll bar if it's not a clothes hanger on Castile's back. Neck brace. First down and 10. Here's Long wanting to throw, and Moritz is open. Moritz is wide open. Fifth catch of the day. First down, Hawkeyes. Joe Cozart makes the tackle, but it's a gain of 17 for Moritz. He's already over 100 yards in receiving for the day. Remember, Cozart is at the free safety position. He normally is a corner filling in for Vince Clark at free safety now. Moritz, number five, the split in. Plenty of cushion, good concentration. Too much cushion by Tennessee. There's no reason to give those type of receivers that Iowa has. They do not have the breakaway speed in the receivers. Get on them a little bit closer. Moritz's 57-yard touchdown catch was the tying TD. We are tied at seven. Here comes the blitz. Good blocking for long. Man coverage right side. Moritz again. Carlton Peoples made the tackle, but they beat the blitz and forced it into a man situation on the left side. When you have to blitz to keep people off balance and hopefully make a big play defensively, you saw the defensive back on the blitz, you force your secondary into man coverage. You hear it all the time by supposedly expert commentators. That's what happens. That's a graphic illustration. You see the blitz, you have to go to man coverage in the secondary normally, and usually there's too much cushion because you don't want to get beat, get beat deep. Hard to say. Second down, three. Mike Hufford, Jonathan Hayes in as a double tight end set for Iowa now. Option play, Long pitches it, Eddie Phillips. Got the first down plus as he's banged out of bounds at the Tennessee bench by Dewan Henry, number 39. But the Hawkeyes are moving. They have come from their own 11 to a first down in Tennessee country. I think they're on the option play for me. I made such a joke about it yesterday at the luncheon. <laughs> I loved what you said yesterday about your days as a high school defensive back. Said they never threw one over Steve. That's now right. you want to explain uh, why? Exactly. I was a sophomore year in high school back in Salazar. Coach said, Steve, play, play defensive safety. Don't let them throw a ball over you. I, I, they did. I was 60 yards deep in the secondary. No high school kid pull it that far. Didn't make any tackles either. But. First down and 10, Long will throw. Goes deep left side, splits double coverage to Moritz again. And the Hawks really have found the combination that has worked magic this afternoon. Chuck Long is a 64% passer. There are the picks of the linebackers. Watch Moritz, number five, break into the secondary. There are five underneath people, breaks to the outside. It's a, a flag type route. There's Cozart again, number three, but excellent thrown ball. Perfect position to throw the football by Chuck Long. He's really on target. Long is perfect, as a matter of fact. 10 of 10. First down and 10. Blitz coming again. Hawkeyes get nailed this time. 
Joe Kofer and Bill Bates collaborate defensively. Numbers 42 and 40. Eddie Phillips with a handoff. Take a look at long stats. 10 of 10 for 175. There's a look at the defensive unit of the Tennessee Volunteers. And Joe Kofer, whose brother Mike, is the starting defensive end. Oops, he's got an arrow in his head. That's right. And it's going south instead hopefully, of north. Hopefully that's not the way the offense is going. <laughs> Second down and 12. Long will try and make it 11 in a row. He's going to run it instead, and he's out of bounds at the 18-yard line. Carlton Peoples, number 19, makes the tackle. We are tied at 7 with 7.05 to go in the first quarter. Vern Lundquist, Steve Davis here on New Year's Eve afternoon. The coaches describing Chuck Long said he really has adapted well. He's only a sophomore. He's adapted well of the college game. This time he sees his receivers covered. He's smart. I'm not going to force the ball. I've got a little bit of a seam. Let's go get a few yards and play it safe. Don't force the football. He really has done a good job. He played in a high school running type offense. And to come and throw the football the way he is really makes a difference. Hayden's upset, but his team is moving the ball. Third down, four. Blitz coming again. Long. Shakes it. Goes deep in the end zone. Man is open. Caught. Touchdown. Ronnie Harmon, the freshman. is up and good. Ronnie Harmon, a freshman from Laurelton, New York, and Chuck Long, folks, has completed 11 of 11 for 193 and two touchdowns. Ronnie Harmon with his second touchdown catch of the season. This one from 18 yards out. And that drive went 89 yards in nine plays. Again, though, Steve, not much time on the clock. Right, the ability of Iowa to take the ball. They're being very patient, but really Tennessee blitzed themselves right out of the position. It's a very risky defense when you start blitzing so much. You're going to have those home run balls thrown on you. You're giving up a lot of your defense and passing as hard as Chuck Long is. You better get some people back to play the pass. Reggie Roby will kick it off. Willie Galt is deep to receive. The folks from Iowa City are thrilled thus far. 14-7. Here's Roby's kick. Galt will bring it back from a yard into the end zone. is cut down by number 14, Keith Hunter, at the 21-yard line. Well, Chuck Long came into the game with a school record of 64.2%, and the total yards passing so far, 193. He is a perfect 11 of 11. Sometimes coaches on the field, they get so wrapped up in the ball game, Vern, they don't realize, hey, that kid's not throwing an incomplete pass. And so the tendency sometimes, they get wrapped up in it, and they lose the field, and so they continue their defensive plan. All guys have the lead for the first time. Tennessee has a first down at its own 21. And Alan Cockrell will throw. Lips it across short, and there was a problem with the official. The umpire got in the way, and that's just an inadvertent call. Now, the fans are going to get upset, but... He's doing the best he can. The umpire has one of the most difficult jobs on the field. There he is. He's watching line play. He's, his job is to come forward. He does. He can't help that. He just gets in a play. He had, you know, a lot of times they do get upset, but he had to go in that area. And you just have, the same thing happened to me in the Orange Bowl. I hit, I hit the, one of the officials, and I got so upset. He said, just act like I'm not here, son. But you still won, right? Beat Michigan. Barely. 14-6. Second down and 10. I set for the Volunteers. Quick pitch out in the right flat. That'll be caught and downed almost immediately by Mike Miller at the 26-yard line. It is a fair catch. One of the problems that most teams have when they play Tennessee and the tremendous speed at the wide outs or wide receivers is they cannot imitate the speed of those receivers. There are not enough fast guys that can go out and run the routes against the secondary and give them any idea or picture on how fast and how much cushion they ought to give a receiver. 
Third down, six. We've got 6-19 remaining first half. 14 to seven, Iowa leads. Tennessee at its own 25-yard line. They are two of five on third down conversion so far. Cockrell rolls out. Now he can either run or throw. Now he's being chased, and he'll do neither. Tony Wunkett, number 92. For just a fraction, I thought Cockrell could have tucked it and run. But Wonkett contained him and got the sack. Tony Wonkett is really more agile than Strobel. The other defensive end on the outside. This time, Cockrell gets outside. Wonkett right there where he has to be. Good control of the quarterback. Keep him out in front of him. Make the tackle. Ron Hawley is deep to receive, and Jimmy Colquitt will punt it. He has kicked it 52-51 and 51 so far. No pressure at all. And this one, not that great a kick. Short man catches it. And it's taken at the 48-yard line. Hawkeyes get it back with good field position. And they're really on a roll now with a 14-7 lead. Coming up on Saturday, January 15th, CBS Sports. Hayden Fry, as a matter of fact, will be one of the East coaches, and Steve Davis will be there. Here's Long. That one's going to wobble, and it goes for Moritz, and that's the first incomplete pass that Long has thrown today. So the streak ends at 11. But 11 or 12 is something you would brag about, I think. If I could do that playing catch, I would be happy about it. There's Chuck Long's statistics. 11 or 12, 193 yards and two touchdowns. And, of course, I always put so much pressure on Cockrell. He's not had the productivity that young Chuck Long has. Hawkeye Band will entertain us along with the Tennessee Volunteer Band at halftime. First down or second down and 10. Eddie Phillips gets the handoff, number 22, and he's buried under a stack of orange shirts after a gain of a couple. Any surprises so far? Probably the blitzing tendencies of Tennessee, don't you think? Exactly. I, I'm very surprised that they've really, you know, coaches watching are going to say they're throwing a lot of garbage at Iowa, trying to get them confused and mixed up, and yet Chuck Long is just poised. He's looking at the field and taking advantage of the open receiver. Third and nine, and the Hawkeyes are a very good five out of eight on third down conversions. Five of seven. Third and nine. All day. Harmon tipped incomplete. Good defensive play by Carlton Peoples, number 19. Senior out of Memphis. Now Tennessee is starting to play a little bit smarter football. They're not taking the blitz. They're trying to play a little bit more pass defense. That's Carlton Peoples, 19. No blitzing. They're able to play their zone coverage. He's dropped off. He's got some support behind him. He makes a mistake. Here's Reggie Roby, and it's almost blocked. Very high. That'll bounce and take an Iowa roll and be down at the 14-yard line. Reggie Roby, number one kicker in the country the last two years. 34-yard kick that time for a 4.8 average. A year ago, he had an average of 49.8. Coming up, you may have seen some of them. You may have heard about them. 12.30 Eastern time tomorrow afternoon. 14 to 7 score. And the Volunteers have a first down 10 at their own 17. Draw play. Fumble. Scramble. Iowa ball. Clay Eulenhake, number 73, a senior from Moravia, Iowa. And a disappointed Johnny Majors. One of the things that Johnny Majors prided himself in is the ability of not to turn the ball over. Coleman, number 35, will make a mistake and fumble the football. Let's see if it's the hit or if it's just ah, his own man. The ball was popped loose by one of his own offensive linemen, hit the ball, surprised him. Maybe that's the reason why it popped loose. Tennessee's not turned the ball over this year. That is only their ninth fumble of the season. Owen Gill gets about three at left tackle. Sophomore out of Brooklyn, New York. So the turnovers are now even at one apiece. And the one Iowa fumble led to a Tennessee touchdown. They had a 7-0 lead on Cockrell's touchdown run. Tennessee has scored 14 unanswered points, and they've got the ball at the 16-yard line now. Second down and seven. Aiden Fry. Look above us, Steve, and the blue is starting to show through the clouds. They may get a break in the weather. Gill again. 
to the 11. Bill Bates makes the tackle, number 40. By the way, the defensive coordinator at uh, Tennessee, Bobby Jackson, has resigned at the conclusion of this game. He's been the defensive coordinator and did not announce any future plans. May have said Tennessee scored 14 unanswered points. It was Iowa, and they've got a 14 to 7 lead. Third and two at the 11. And we've got 3-11 to go in the first half. Volunteers adjust defensively. Out of the backfield, motion left side. Pitch out Owen Gill. Nothing there. Field goal unit will come on, and if there is a decided edge between these two teams, it goes to the field goal kicking unit of Tennessee, not Iowa. Tom Nickel has kicked only four out of ten for the year. And I don't see him on the field yet. Timeout is called by the Hawkeyes. And Chuck Long wants to talk it over with Hayden Fry. Fuad Reves of Tennessee, as we told you at the beginning of the show, has 27 of 31. And the Hawkeye field goal production substantially below that. Only 4 out of 10 for Tom Nickel. And so... Go try. We'll talk it over and see if they go. I'd be surprised. Don't you? Fourth and two. If they kick a field goal. I'd be surprised if they go for it. They really must not have that much faith in their field goal outfit. Well, I think they've got the momentum. It's sometimes you think in terms of momentum, and of course the, the kids on the field are saying, let's go for it. And they have been impressed. And if they get the score, then they've got to... Uh, puts Tennessee in even a more adverse situation where they're forcing Tennessee to throw the ball and be more predictable. It's always best to play defense against a predictable offense. If they can get them in a throwing mode, then that's the difference. What are they going to do? They're going to kick it. Uh, just like I said. <laughs> Tom Nickel, <laughs> sophomore from Green Bay, Wisconsin. It was a good point. It was a great point. <laughs> I'm going to etch it in stone. That's right. Chisel it in hey, concrete. Forget it. <laughs> Tom Grogan, the backup quarterback, will, uh, will kick it. Nickel is two out of three from this distance for the year. Grogan will hold. Nickel will kick. He's a sidewinder. It's a fake. Tom Grogan, he's going to be really close. I don't know whether they got it or not. Dewan Henry made the tackle. Now, Grogan started one game as a quarterback this year. Let's see if he got it. Well, Hayden Fry has some exotics in the offensive game plan, and there was one of them. The fake field goal. First and goal. You know, that's a pretty gutsy call by Hayden Fry. Grogan had only run the ball nine times for a total of eight yards. Maybe it's all on fake field goal attempts. Goes right through the seam. Good head-on-head -head tackle. But all he needed was just a bit, just a little bit. See, they did run the ball, right? I knew they would. He must have called Danny White last night. <laughs> First and goal, Iowa. 14-7 Hawkeyes lead. They've got the ball in the eight. Long will throw. Right side for Harmon. He's got a touchdown. touchdown coming in. He's got three now. Again, the blitz there in man coverage. Lee Jenkins, the only senior of the secondary, one of three seniors in the secondary at Tennessee. He's got him man on man. Let's watch him again. There's number one. He squares up. He's got him man because they're no, he knows they're going to blitz. A little push and shove. Turn your head. Look for the football. Find it. Go knock it down. Harmon dead. Jenkins didn't. Touchdown. Extra point. He's up and through. Hawkeyes are really on a roll now. Harmon has two touchdown catches, and Chuck Long is 12 for 14 for 201 yards and three touchdowns. Johnny Majors indicated he was concerned about his defense, and they have been lenient so far today. On Sunday, CBS Sports has... On defense, you try to hide certain aspects of your game, and so you take chances. Tennessee has been caught, unfortunately, too many times. They've given up 21 points by being caught. There is the All-American putter, Reggie Roby. He's getting set to kick off to the All-American kick return specialist, Willie Galt. Short kick this time. Galt 
will let it bounce. That's a free ball. Somebody grab it. Galt does. And he's put in a coffin by number 29, Nate Creer, a freshman cornerback. This is a team, the Iowa team, that lost 16 starters off of last year's Rose Bowl team. And they really thought it would be a rebuilding year. They thought it would have a horrible year. They thought that they thought they'd finish maybe seventh. The Big Ten Skyriders picked them as at the bottom of the league that they might finish around seventh, but they have really played exceptional football. First and ten, Tennessee. They trail now 21 to 7. Draw play. Goes to Doug Furness, the fullback, and Dave Brown isn't fooled. Number 59 is there to make the tackle on number 31. And we've got less than two minutes remaining in the first half. Now, what Tennessee has to do in this particular drive, utilize the fear of their great speed. They get a lot of cushion. All Cockrell's got to do is complete some passes, some comebacks, some hitch-type routes where the receivers are coming back to football and taking advantage of that good cushion that I was going to give them. Second down and nine. again oh what a hit by Larry Station uh, Station is number 36 he's the leading tackler for Iowa he's a freshman from Omaha Nebraska who is a terrific all-around athlete and student 6'1 230 pounds he had a 3.8 grade point average in high school played tennis as well he was one of the most widely recruited young athletes in mid-america the defensive coaches think that he has one of the brightest futures of any iowa football player He's extremely talented smart kid good leader on the field even as a freshman third down eight tennessee they trail by 14 with 50 seconds to go first half five-man rush cockrell is nailed shakes it and completes it up at the 21 no incomplete pass Intended for Kenny Jones and Strawn Joseph, number 96, was on him like a curtain. And that kills the clock with 40 seconds, and Hayden is saying, get on out there. Boy, he is an enthusiastic guy. Great after-dinner speaker. Quite a character. He's got one of his sons on his staff now. He has four sons and a daughter. Ron Holly back to return, and Jim Colquitt will kick it. 52, 51, and 37 so far. And there's a good kick by Colquitt. Holly will let it bounce, and it'll take a medium-sized Tennessee roll down to the 32-yard line. That's a 52-yard punt for Jim Colquitt. No return, of course, and the hang time was 4.1 seconds. Ironically, Colquitt made one second-team All-American choice, but he was second-team All-SEC as well to Jim Arnold of Vanderbilt. He's just a sophomore. And here come the Hawkeyes with 29 seconds to go in the first half. Phillips and Granger are the running backs now behind Chuck Long. Into the flat, Eddie Phillips. To the 40. That's an eight-yard gain, and Iowa will no doubt call timeout. Carlton Peoples, number 19, made the tackle. And we've got 16 seconds to go in the half. Now Iowa's got Tennessee backpedaling on the back of their heels, moving back, giving them a lot of cushion. All Chuck Long did is just drop the ball in underneath the linebackers. 16 seconds to go in the first half of play. Coming up at halftime, we've got uh, both bands, of course, and an In Their Own Words feature, which you will enjoy, with George Kafko, who is the kicking coach... I mean, I am long of tooth, but I'm not quite that long of tooth. 21-7. Iowa has a 14-point lead. Uh -oh. There's a man open, but it's overthrown. Eddie Phillips was open, and that will stop the clock with 11 seconds remaining in the first half. There's a runner-up, Johnny Majors. Single wing tailback under Bowden Wyatt at Tennessee back in 56 when he was an All-American. And of course, his brothers Bill and Bob played here. Joe played at Florida State. And Larry, the fourth major's brother, played for his dad at Sewanee. 11 seconds to go. It has been an all Iowa second quarter. They have scored all 21 points in this second stanza. And the young man standing by Hayden Fry then, 31, Ronnie Harmon, had caught two of them. 
Long into triple coverage, got at the 49, the 39 yard line. That will stop the clock while they move the chain. Dave Moritz makes yet one more catch. That's his eighth of the game. And the Hawkeyes do not, will try the field goal. Tom Nickel comes on. This will be a 55 yard effort. And maybe a little outside his range. Reves has eight of 10 plus 50, but Nickel has not hit one yet. The snap, the kick. Oh, he's pumped. This may make it. No, just short. Just short. But the Iowa fans are content. 21 to 7. Three touchdown passes from Chuck Long. Two to Ronnie Harmon. One to Dave Moritz. Long 14 of 17 for 231 yards in the first half alone. We'll be back with our halftime activities after this word from your local station. Defense and offense. The one touchdown for Tennessee followed a turnover at midfield, a fumble recovery. And, and uh, the magic 50 barrier has never been broken, and he didn't get quite that close this year. Here's Roby's kick. Say goodnight, Mama. No, Willie, not even with your speed. Bring it out to the 20. Reggie Roby. Says he kicks an average of 300 times a day in practice. So Tennessee has a first down 10 at their own 20-yard line, trailing by 14. Do you expect... We really haven't seen them go deep that much yet, have we? They've not taken advantage of the threat that I was so worried about the deep play. You know, they've got to at least question it. They've not really even tried to throw the ball deep at all. Hayden Fry said yesterday, if, if Iowa is to win, they must not give up the big play, and he was afraid of it. High formation on first down and 10. Alan Cockrell back at quarterback. Quick pitch, right side. Caught by Daryl Wilson, number 87, and the tackle is made by Keith Hunter, number 14. So the first play works for a gain of about five yards, maybe six if they spot it at the 26, which they do. That particular play was taking advantage of the soft cushion that Iowa will give Tennessee, but they've not been consistent at hitting that mid-range pass that Tennessee has been able to win with all season. Second down and four. Splitbacks this time. Three wide receivers. Two to the left and one wide right. Nine play left side. Big hole for Doug Furness, the fullback. And he plows it out to the 41-yard line. That's a gain of 16. And Ron Holly made the tackle, number 19. Watch this pluggy fullback from Oklahoma. Doug played at Northeastern A&M up in Miami, Oklahoma. Doug Furness from Commerce. Breaks into the secondary, a tough, tenacious football player, just likes to run over people. 5'10", 217 senior. Cockrell did not like the defensive alignment he saw or disagreed with the play selection. Furness's uh, stats for the day, 21 yards. And so Cockrell has called timeout and gone over to the Tennessee bench. And Trey Jackson comes in defensively now. Now... It was not a charge timeout. It was not a charge timeout. So Tennessee has the ball first down 10 at their own 42. Play fake, and Cockrell wants a bunch this time. He's got a man open and overthrows him. One of the problems for Tennessee this season has been their inconsistency. They've been great one week, as they were in that momentous win over Alabama. And they've been a little shaggy on other occasions. They've and been able to get ready for the big football games. They have won, normally, the big ball games. They have gone in and gotten beaten by teams that, at least going in, they had a better than chance, better than most chance of winning. And it's been that inconsistency that plagued them all year. But Cockrell's been the stabilizing factor. That time he missed a guy that was open by five yards. Seven out of 15 for Alan Cockrell for the game now. We're in the only opening moments of the third quarter. Reverse again. Coleman coming left with three blockers in front. First down, 10. Chuck Coleman, second time they've run the play. Bobby Stoops made the tackle. There was an excellent block by the fullback, Doug Furness, number 31. Also, Dave Brown also got blocked down. Let's see what happens. Here's the block inside. He'll pursue outside, get cut off the play. Let's see, there's Doug Furness picking up 
Dave Brown, the nose guard. Good fullback play, excellent block by Furness, number 31. Gain of 16 yards, volunteers are on the march. They've got the ball at the Iowa 45. Dive play right side. Doug Furness again. This time it works for only a gain of six feet as Dave Brown, who had been blocked out of the previous play, fought off the block and made the tackle. Here's Tennessee going back to what they were successful with in the first quarter when they really gained control of the ball game. They were able to mix it up a lot. Let's watch inside. 59, Dave Brown. He's working on Streno, number 53. Slides down the line of scrimmage and makes the play. Second down, eight. And Cockrell will throw. Drills it. Caught. First down. Lenny Taylor, number two, made the catch. He's a junior from Miami, Florida. It's a gain of 20 for the Cockrell-Taylor connection. A good, safe pass. Cockrell just looks and looks at the coverage and see if there's going to be a man. The linebacker gets right out of the area. Perfect little inside cut right in front of the linebacker. Lenny Taylor, number two. The tackle's made by Haley and Hunter. The two defensive backs. First down with 12.25 to go third quarter at the 24-yard line. That three-wide receiver set for the Volunteers again. Option play, the handoff goes to Furness, the fullback. Been busier here in the third quarter than he was in the first half uh, alone. Doug Furness makes the carry. And Mark Bortz, number 63, the defensive tackle, the All-Big Ten selection, made the, uh, made the stop. 14 to 6 on first downs now. At the half, Tennessee had only three. They got something going now, Steve. They really do. Momentum is, I think, you feel it changing for Tennessee as they gain momentum in the drive. Cockrell fakes right, throws left. Caught Mike Miller, number 88, inside the 10 to the 9. The senior from Flint, Michigan, one of the three speedsters. Remember the previous play that they threw across the, the, the quick pass to Lenny Miller, uh, Lenny Taylor, number two. This time he looks to the right, the same play. Then he sees he's covered, goes outside to Mike Miller, number 88. Cockrell, good, smooth, cool quarterback, looks at the coverage, saw it, it was not on the right side. Then he went to a second alternative receiver. First and goal at the 10. play again. This is Coleman. Gets a block. Touchdown! of being able to take advantage of a complex defensive end. He doesn't know he's coming forward that time. It's the quick pitch to Coleman, number 35. Iowa did not expect the option play. Bounces right into the end zone. He got a terrific block from, among others, Glenn Streno, the center, number 53. And Johnny Majors must have given him a pep talk, and Rafaez is unsuccessful for the first time this year. I do not know whether it was tipped. Let's see if the hold and the snap were okay. There is the hold. The snap was inside. It, the ball, I cannot tell. It might not have got on the tee. Reves really held back on kicking the football. The snap was inside and really put the pressure on him. That's the first time Reves has missed an extra point this season. He had 45 in a row. But Tennessee has scored. <laughs> Harmon and J.C. Love Jordan back to return the kick. There were no third downs in that drive. On second down, Tennessee was three out of three for 46 yards. And a very impressive start to the third quarter for the Volunteers. Must be Williams, Jennings, Bryan instead of Johnny Majors who was in there at halftime. Harmon and Love Jordan are deep. And Reves will kick it off. There's the boot. Taken by J.C. Love Jordan at the four. Watch out. One more tackle, and Reves would have had to have saved it. Well, Fouad Reves has been working out with the rest of the volunteers all week, but he's had a, had a problem, and that is, watch this uh, at the Georgia Tech practice field. Nothing unusual about this, right? John Warren holding, Reves kicking, pull back. Hold on, folks, where are the goalposts? They weren't there. They had been moved and taken over to uh, Atlanta Fulton County Stadium, so he had to... Uh, 
work without goalposts. That had nothing to do with the missed extra point, however, and it may have just been a tough hold. Here's Chuck Long with a reverse of his own. It goes to Owen Gill. Blockers in front. Spins out of a tackle, drives forward. He gets it out near the 35-yard line. 80-yard drive in nine plays, 344, and Chuck Coleman got a touchdown on a 10-yard run and a great momentum swing for Tennessee to start the second half. They really mixed up their play selection. They took advantage of those short, medium-range passes. They ran the option play in, in, a, time, in a timely uh, position on the field and took advantage of all the play selection that they've had in the first quarter when they had their most success in the ballgame. First down, 10, Iowa, 21-13 lead. Splitbacks behind Chuck Long. Drills it. Caught. Vince Campbell, his second catch of the day. A couple of number 85s mixing it up. Mike Terry, number 85, made the tackle of Vince Campbell, 85. And Chuck Long continues to dazzle. He's 15 of 18 for 240 yards. That time Chuck Long dropped back. He looked to his left. The receivers were all covered very smartly and calmly. Just goes over to Vince Campbell, his alternative receiver. Now timeout has been called by the officials. And Dave Moritz may have a, an equipment problem of some sort. He comes to the Iowa bench. One of the officials noticed something, and they're going to check his helmet, I guess it is. Well, he, bloody nose. Chin straps also supposed to be buckled up. Hayden Fry is one of the real adv advocates in college football for safety. An article in the NCAA football magazine came out and Hayden really talking about safety and the design. Even talking about going back to one for 10 football. Moritz has to sit out of play. And so the Hawkeyes now adjust. Norm Granger is the only running back. And Long will throw for the 19th time today. Fires it in triple coverage, caught by Owen Gill, first down at the 31. This is punch, counterpunch. And the Hawkeyes fight right back. Tremendous concentration by Owen Gill, the running back, number 33. There are good coverage by Tennessee. The ball was tipped inside by Wampler, number 77. Everybody was around. Late hit, two of that in the late hit. There's a penalty against the Volunteers. We won't get the number, but we'll get the indication. Ball. Personal foul. Curry with the head. Defense. Automatic first down. That is James Garvey. Let's look at the end of the play and see what we can find out. Owen Gill right there. 33 goes up. Now, when he hits the ground, guys, leave him alone. Who is that? Uh -oh. That is Doug Parrish, number 86. A senior defensive back from Americus, Georgia. Here's Long. Nobody open. Flag is down. Long deep in the end zone. Overthrown. May have a holding call. It was Doug Parrish, the uh, defensive back, who made the spear. But now we might have Iowa holding. Yep. Bring it back to the north side. Number 40, Bill Bates, the senior captain, defensively for Tennessee. As indicated, we'll take it. And they will mark off again. Here's the call. Start offensive holding during the pass protection. 10-yard penalty. First down. Cornerback number 19 made the tackle. You have to be so impressed with Chuck Long, the sophomore's ability to look at all of his receivers. Watch his head. It's moving right to left. He's looking at the whole field. He steps inside, senses pressure. So many things that are so instinctive. And he goes to Owen Gill, the open man, about the third receiver in the system on that particular call. Iowa lost the opener. There's a graphic on Owen Gill. They lost the opener in a big way to Nebraska. Chuck Long started that game. And then Hayden Fry benched him against Iowa State. He came back against Arizona and has been a dazzler ever since. Blitz is on. Long gets rid of it. Flags are down. And so is Norm Granger, number 26. As Xavier Cook, number 5, and Joe Kofer, number 42, got there. May have offside Tennessee. The blitz was coming, and they may have come early. Now, by George, when you make an offside signal, you ought to do it with emphasis. A little bit of pizzazz on the last day of the year. <laughs> Love Garvey, boy. Hands on hips. That was definite offside. There was no doubt about it. <laughs> Johnny Majors. 
rallying the sideline. Trying to find the key, the offside call. Second down. And we'll do second down again. Now, Glenn Bugs has made an appearance in the lineup. It'll be second down and seven. 47-year-old John Majors, 52-year-old Hayden Fry. Kind of looked like he was on the Richard Simmons show or something doing this. <laughs> Shotgun formation. Long gets the snap. Quarterback draw. They got a little bit of everything in the playbook. DeJuan Henry makes the tackle, and there's a little scuffle that is broken out. And hold everything. See what we've got now. Chuck Long likes it. Personal foul. <laughs> there is no doubt when Mr. Garvey makes a call as to what it was. Let's see. It was at the end of the play. Oh, well, there's... Oh, Mr. Bates. Billy Bates and Glenn Bugs. That's a Bug Bates. That was just a little toss there. Kind of backhand. That'll be on number 40. That's punch, counter punch. Dead ball foul. Personal foul. Defense. Johnny Majors has got the headset off now. That'll be first and goal at the four. Our score is 21-3, and what had been a cleanly played game is disintegrated here on this drive. Got to keep your poise in critical part of the football game. Tennessee digs in. They trail by eight. Option play. Flags down again. Pitch out Owen Gill. And he gets it to the three-yard line, but we've got three flags on the field. Joe Kofer, number 42, made the tackle. Mr. Garvey's getting a lot of airtime. <laughs> Offside, Tennessee. March off two more yards. Johnny Major's got to be a little upset at the lack of discipline the volunteers are suddenly showing. They came out storming here to open the second half, but things have fallen apart on this current defensive series. Here's the call. Defense. Offside. Repeat first down. First and goal from the two. That's how much they've got to cover to increase the lead. Center Joe Hilgenberg over the ball. Recognize the name? Uncle Wally played with Minnesota for years. Touchdown, Eddie Phillips. to follow the surge of his offensive line. He cuts it outside, then he sees it back inside, just using the seam, using his leg strength, his power to get into the end zone. He had four touchdowns in regular season. He gets his first today. That is the first touchdown on the ground for Iowa this afternoon. And Tom Nickel is on to try the extra point. Tom Grogan will hold. Joel Hilgenberg will center. A high snap. The kick is up. And he got it through nonetheless. Take a look at Eddie Phillips, who had the touchdown that has given Iowa a 28 to 13 lead with 8.29 to go third quarter. 52 years of age, Hayden Fry said yesterday he's quit. He would quit the day he quit enjoying coaching football and teaching young men. And he's done quite a job at Iowa as they are in bowls back to back for the first time in 20 years. Matter of fact, they had not gone to a bowl since 59 when they went to the Rose Bowl. There's Reggie Roby, the senior punter and place kicker, or kickoff specialist, and Willie Galt, senior out of Griffin, Georgia, is deep to receive it. 28 to 13. I love what Hayden Fry said yesterday when we asked him about why the turnaround, what's done. He said two things. One, I want assistant coaches that attract quality, so quality assistant coaches. The second thing is to have fun, and they are doing just that. Matter of fact, one of his assistants, Bill Brazier, the defensive coordinator, has been with him through it all, and they've had quite a trip. Roby will kick off, and Galt is ready to receive. Nice high kick. Galt a yard back. Doesn't get the opening, does not get it out to the 20. Jonathan Hayes made the tackle. Let's look at the run of Eddie Phillips again. Uh, that was not Eddie Phillips. <laughs> that was Tennessee. 
Well, this was a touchdown sometime back by Chuck Coleman, and uh, <laughs> he went 10 yards. That was the first touchdown by Tennessee. That's one for the truck. That's right. <laughs> first down and 10, Tennessee. High formation. Alan Cockrell in at quarterback. Play fake. Fires man wide open. Notice how soft the cornerbacks are playing. That's Keith Hunter making the tackle on Darrell Wilson, but they're really giving them that five, six yard cushion. They have to, Steve, to respect that speed. And really, so much time when you have that kind of speed, you're gonna get it whether you hit them at all. There's the Iowa scoring drive, didn't take long. But they're gonna give you that kind of cushion play after play, and Tennessee's just gotta keep trying to make those passes complete, or at least get close with a threat still there. Flip left side on first down, 10. Cocker will throw it again, splits the difference, and he's got Darrell Wilson for a gain of 13. The senior out of Bristol, Virginia. A fifth-year senior who caught 23 for the season. And Larry Station makes the tackle. There it is. Cockrell's looking at the coverage. Just a quick inside. If the linebacker's in the area of the pass, he'll go to an alternate receiver. 7.45 to go third quarter. It's 28-13, Iowa on top. I said again, Cockrell with the option play. Gets it to the 49 of Iowa. Mike Yakulo, number 39, makes the tackle, and the flag is down. Here's James Garvey. Personal foul. This time it's against the Hawkeyes. And that'll cost him 15. I don't think either of the personal foul penalties that we've seen were intentional. I think they were just effort mistakes, kids trying to go 100%. There it is, the personal foul. Trying to make a big play, and all of a sudden the runner goes down and it's a late hit. First down 10, Tennessee at the Iowa 34-yard line. Again, the I set behind Allen Cockrell. He'll throw at the half roll. Got a man deep in man coverage, and it's going to be overthrown wide to the right side. As Mike Miller made his cut to the post, in other words, cutting to his left, Cockrell threw it to the corner. So they had a mix-up on the route. And Alan Cockrell, I think, just kind of emphasized, he said, I'm sorry, I threw it the wrong place. Either the route or the throw. Watch him. Again, the threat is there. Now, this will give him a chance on a shallower, more medium-range pass to possibly open it up. There it is. The receiver is one place, the ball's the other. Keith Hunter was defending number 14. And you look at Kurt Singer, left tackle, as he brings him up. Cockrell, 11 of 20 for 107 today. Here comes the rush. Cockrell avoids it. Goes short, and the catch is made by Doug Furness, the fullback at the 27-yard line. Tackle is made by the linebacker, James Erb, number 32. That will bring up a third down and a need of about three. Johnny Majors prowling the sideline. Third and two, call it officially. 28-13 game. Third quarter, 6:51. From Lundquist and Steve Davis here at the Beach Bowl in Atlanta. And we trust you're enjoying this as much as we are. The first back-to-back -back games on CBS. The Cotton Bowl coming up tomorrow, SMU and Pitt. Option play, the lead counter option. This is the play on which they scored the touchdown. And Cockrell may have moved the chains. Dave Strobel makes the tackle. But he got enough for the first down 10. You look at George Kafko, the man we featured in his own words, halftime. Well, Tennessee has moved the ball much, much, much less effortlessly in this half than they did in the first half. They really have. They're taking advantage of all their offense, mixing it up for Iowa. The option play has really been an important play in all their drives, scoring drives. First down 10, Tennessee. 28-13 ball game, Iowa leads. Blitz coming. Cockrell hands it off left side. And Larry Station makes the tackle on the fullback, Doug Furness. Vern, what the option play does for Tennessee is that the defensive ends cannot just concentrate on flying for the run, for the for the pass play. They've got to stay at home. They've got to watch the quarterback, watch down the line of scrimmage, and so it puts a little bit more pressure. They've got to think a little bit more, use their head, and now Tennessee's taking advantage of it. Cockrell brings them up. Kurt Singer, Mike Furness, Glenn Streno, Bill Mayo, John Matthews, and Kenny Jones, his offensive line. They've done a good job here in the third quarter. 
Play fake. He's got time. Goes deep left side. Man open. Touchdown, Tennessee. Willie Galt has been a silent member of the offense until this moment. But the threat was always there. And he beat the coverage deep left corner. A blitz is coming straight ahead. Cockrell will just see what's Galt coming across the middle right there. Good break. Too much cushion with all that speed. Well-coordinated, planned drive. Well-called all the way down the field. Tennessee will go for two. They missed the last extra point when the ball was flat on the tee. From the three-yard line, Cockrell calls the signals. Option play, he can run or throw. Pulls up, goes back left side. And it's incomplete. But nonetheless, for the second time in the third quarter, Tennessee has scored. It's 28-19. Iowa will get the ball. For 19, depending on the play, we'll have more to show you about Ron and his... Efforts in 1982 coming up in just a few moments. Fouad Reves will kick it off. Tennessee right back in it. It's 28-19. Iowa with the lead, and they're about to get the ball. Love Jordan and Harmon wait for it. This is J.C. Love Jordan, number 15. To the 20. Johnny Majors with quite a halftime oration, apparently, because the volunteers on offense have really come storming out in the second half. 28-19 ball game. And Hayden Fry, his team, had that 21-point explosion in the first half with a 21-7 halftime lead. And right now, 28-19. Neither team has been stopped here in the third quarter, and we've got 5-28 remaining. set to the left side, Owen Gill, and Chuck Wong is changing plays at the line of scrimmage. Nobody open. Still nobody open. Now somebody open, but the pass is incomplete. Intended for Ronnie Harmon. And excellent downfield coverage by the Volunteers then. That brings up a second down and 10. Ron Holly, number 19, defending on that last play. Remember the Michigan State game, the last of the year? Michigan State driving and Holly defending. The game was played in Lansing. Watch what happens. The ball overthrown in the end zone, and watch 19, Ron Holly. Up the right side it goes. Top goes to Owen Gill, number 33, and Reggie McKenzie, number 51, made the tackle with help from Mike Terry, number 85. Owen Gill, sophomore, former rugby player. And coming up now, we've got a third down and seven. This will be the first third down play in this half. First third down. See that Tennessee has gotten cranked on the passing offense in the second half also. And now Tennessee has called a timeout. So Chuck Long will come over and talk it uh, over with Hayden Fry. Meanwhile, defensively, they'll do the same on the Tennessee side. Our score, 28 to 19, Iowa leads. We are USA One, taking charge with celebrity. No import sedan at any price can match this Chevrolet for the room it gives you with the mileage it gives you. Part of the party on Happy New Year, America, tonight at 11.30 Eastern on CBS. Third down, and six. The Iowa Hawkeyes with a nine-point lead, 28-19. Chuck Wong to throw. Gets great protection, but good downfield coverage. Now lets it fly, and it's caught by his tight end. At the 29-yard line, that will not be enough for the first down. Mike Hufford made the catch. Xavier Cook made the tackle, and we've got passable interference. Interference, Tennessee. Chuck Long has had an exceptional game. 17 of 21. For interference. First down. For 272 yards. And if you did join us late, he had a string of 11 in succession. 
to begin the ballgame. Mike Hufford actually didn't catch the last pass thrown to him, but Xavier Cook, number five, was ruled guilty of interference. So the Hawkeyes come back to the line of scrimmage at their own 29-yard line. Take a look at Lauren Gerleman, the right guard, number 72. Long pumps once and goes deep. Good downfield coverage, however, and the pass is too long. That one really didn't have a shot, Steve. Carlton Peoples had great coverage on Ronnie Harmon, number 31. That time they were not in a blitz situation. They were playing zone. Then he broke into a situation where he was in his area and he had to cover him. Carlton Peoples, 19, stayed right on him. I think what's impressive is we were talking about Chuck Long is he's been so poised. He feels pressure. He senses everything. He steps into the pocket. And for a sophomore, has amazing poise and sense of presence on the field. Looks like Davis at Oklahoma in no, 73. I, I, was, I was present on the field. I don't know about presence. <laughs> Second down and 10. formation and Chuck Long audibly. Now they split the backs. Five-man rush. Man is open. Ronnie Harmon has a first down to the 45-yard line, maybe more. Tommy Sims, a freshman number 16, had defensive responsibility, but Harmon makes another catch. Again, watch Ronnie Harmon. This time they're dropping. They have two receivers in the same area. That was uh, Happel number 40. And able to throw to the second man, Harmon was a little bit deeper, attracted the uh, shallower receiver, attracted all the coverage area, and Harmon was in the open. Harmon's a junior college transfer who is a freshman in eligibility. He spent a year at Mount San Antonio Junior College out in California. Eddie Phillips back in there behind Chuck Long, and Long will throw. Mobs reverse. Eddie Phillips with a stiff arm. Don't see that too much anymore. He may have enough for another first down and 10 as Carl Zander, number 45, makes the tackle on Eddie Phillips, number 22. Play almost was stopped right in the backfield. Watch Eddie Phillips. Let's see who that is. It looked like uh, Womp Wampler, number 77. And then, but Phillips is able to break, in, break into the secondary and make the big play for Iowa. Not quite enough for the first down. It'll be second and one. Phillips for the day now with seven carries and 26 yards. One touchdown. That from two yards out. 28-19 our score. Play fake. Long still has it. Gets a block. Has the pass complete at the 35-yard line. It'll be whistled dead. I believe he was down at the 35. Are they going to give him the 30? Maybe so. J.C. Love Jordan. That's L-O-V-E dash Jordan. Whatever his name is, he makes a play. <laughs> Watch Chuck Long again. I just love the way Chuck Long is playing a football game. An exceptional day. The coverage is good. Poor tackling. He love Jordan goes to the turf. Peoples had a chance to make the play, but he was able, Love Jordan was able to break out and make five additional yards off of a poor tackle. Well, I thought his knee was down, but they gave him the five yards to the 29-yard line. First down, 10, Iowa. Blitz coming. Long gets a good block and hands it off. And they beat the blitz with a handoff of the right side. Mike Kofer makes the tackle on Eddie Phillips. It's been Phillips and Gill, but primarily Chuck Long on offense for the Hawkeyes. And they brought 24,000 fans with them from Iowa City and the surrounding area. Good crowd. It was a sellout today. And we've had a couple of no-shows because of the threat of rain at the start. But the skies have cleared even though the sun is going down now. Second down and four. Long to throw. Blitz coming again. He beats it. Flips it out. Maybe intercepted. Picked off at the 21 by Johnny Williams, the nose guard. And that obviously is his first interception of the year, the junior from Knoxville. This is really the first uh-oh play of Chuck Long all day long. He's had a great day. He looks, he moves, he gets a little bit of pressure. Then he's throwing the ball. I really don't know who he's throwing to. But there he is, Johnny Williams, the middle guard, a junior from Knoxville, who they think will be the starting nose guard next year. 2.52 to go. Second turnover for Iowa. They lost a fumble in the first quarter. Ball at the 21. Alan Cockrell has ignited his offensive team. Flags are down. Tennessee's going to be offside. Left side of the line moved early. That'll cost him five. 
we will be selecting the Chevrolet most valuable player for the conclusion of the day as we do on every CBS NCAA football telecast this year. And in their honor, here's the call once again from James Garvey. Hey, dead ball foul. Movement by the offensive line prior to snap. Offense. And when we do make those selections in the fourth quarter, a $1,000 scholarship goes to the general scholarship fund for each school. That's the Chevrolet MVP coming up at the conclusion of the game. In the half, Cockrell, seven of nine in this half. And he wants it now. Into the left flat it goes. This may be intercepted in return, not quite. Nate Creer, number 29, had a shot at it for the Iowa Hawkeyes. It was intended and in and out of the hands of Kenny Jones, number 99. There's a look at another freshman from Brooklyn, New York. And a high school classmate of Owen Gill. 28-19 as you look at Johnny Majors. His team, 6-4-1. This is the third time they have faced a Big Ten team, and ironically, each of the previous two, as today, have come in bowl games. At the Astro Blue Bonnet, where they faced Purdue. Last year at the Garden State, where they faced Wisconsin. Second down, 15, 28-19 ball game. Iowa has the lead. Draw play. Big hole. Chuck Coleman for about 10. It'll be third and five. And Tony Wonkett, number 92, along with Ron Holly, number 19, made the tackle. That time, Iowa dropped into a three-deep secondary and had five underneath people in short, medium zone area. Watch this, three-deep. Coleman's able to see the big hole. Expecting a pass on second and 15 and just breaks into the secondary. Good call by the offensive coaches of Tennessee. Third and four as you look at Chuck Coleman. 28 to 19 game with 150 to go third quarter. Man is wide open. Willie Galt again. Oh, Mike Miller, number 88. The senior out of Flint, Michigan. Mix it up with a run in the passing game, this time to Mike Miller from Flint, Michigan. Two receivers to this side. Watch 88 break to the outside. Right there behind the linebackers in that medium range zone that Tennessee is known to go to. Plenty of cushion. First down 10, Tennessee. Mike Miller with his second catch of the day. He's caught two for 30. Blitz threatened by Larry Station of Iowa. He'll not blitz. The handoff up the middle. Chuck Coleman. Or Doug Furness fighting for yardage to the 40-yard line. Strong Joseph makes the tackle, but the Tennessee fans are on their feet. A masterful job of calling offensive plays, of taking advantage of different sets and different formations to draw play. Iowa's on the back of their heels trying to anticipate the pass and afraid of it. Furness uses his power and explodes in the middle. They're really getting some good blocks out of Furness, the left guard. That's his brother, Mike Furness. Now Cockrell in trouble will freelance it and gets it to the 31-yard line. Mike Yakulo made the tackle, number 39. I am amazed at this Tennessee turnaround after halftime. They look like a totally different team, Steve. Well, both of these football teams have tremendous amount of character. The coaches were very impressed with the character of their own squads and the kind of people they have. And, and you know, athletes really rise to the occasion in this situation. And Tennessee has taken advantage of maybe an Iowa that set back and said, hey, we got the ball game won. A pass interception from Johnny Williams at the 21. And now the Volunteers are at the Iowa 31. Splitbacks on second and one. Blitz threatened by the Hawkeyes again. Cockrell has it. Dive play. Furnace. Furnace uses that leg power to get a first down 10. And James Erb, number 32, made the tackle. 5'10", 217-pound senior fullback, Doug Furnace, who's been using blocks from his younger brother Mike in the offensive line. That's right. Tennessee is really taking advantage of mixing up plays, giving Iowa a lot of different looks doing the right things offensively. That's the end of the third quarter with our score. The Iowa Hawkeyes, 28. The Volunteers of Tennessee, 19. We'll be back with fourth quarter action after this message and a word from your local station. We get underway with the fourth quarter. Bert Lundquist along with Steve Davis here at Atlanta Fulton County Stadium. Alan Cockrell hits screen right side. Caught out of the left side, rather. 
And Tennessee moves it to the 20-yard line as Darrell Wilson grabs the pass from Cockrell. Bobby Stoops, captain number 41, makes the tackle. But Tennessee having fallen, look at the first downs difference in the first and second half, Steve Davis. It really has been a turnaround, and I think it's been the ability of Alan Cockrell to take advantage of Iowa in particular third down or passing situations. He has really done a good job sensing the blitz and making the right decision on the pass. Second down at the 20. Split backs, the option play again. Pitch out this time. Chucky Coleman down to the 18-yard line. Tony Walkett makes the tackle, but they will move the chains. I think he got enough. Let's wait and see. Perhaps not. Coleman has carried it nine times for 83 yards now, and that will be short of the first down. Most of the time when you watch the option play, you watch the quarterback pitch the ball to the, uh, back, the trailing back. That time, the fullback, Doug Furness, made an excellent block, block on Bobby Stoops, the strong safety, and gave him five additional yards that he would not have. Double tight end offense for Tennessee. Number 81, Jeff Smith, has come in tight to the left side. Kenny Jones is tight right. Split backs on third and one at the 18-yard line. Dive play to Furnace, and it may be close. See where that headlinesman spots the football. As John Madden says, is it a left foot spot or a right foot spot? That makes the difference. That's right. They haven't put it down yet. They will go get the chain, needless to say. 28-19. If you have joined us late, Tennessee recovered a fumble, jumped out to a 7-0 lead, but Iowa exploded for three touchdowns in the second quarter. They led 21-7 at the half. And now we're at 28-19, and here's the stretch. Did not get it. Now what, John Majors? Your choice. He's got a great field goal kicker on the bench. He's got a fourth and a foot at the 18, and he trails by nine. What do you do, Steve? Well, the field goal, of course, gives him a chance to go after a touchdown and an extra point and win the football game. So it's a safe move with the kind of kicker they've got, but I think with the momentum that Tennessee has, they may just go for it, and that's what they're going to do. Here they come. Glenn Streno is the center. Goes back to make sure he's got the snap count, and they will go from a wing eye, a slot eye. Up and over the top, Doug Furness, the fullback. And I believe he got it up. Just Move needed it. a little bit. They did get the first and ten over the top. Doug Furness, the fullback. Good effort by the linebackers and the offensive line against those linebackers, but it was close. First down ten at the 17-yard line now. 28-19 with 13 minutes to go in the ball game. Johnny Majors would probably want to get the touchdown and let the field goal be the easy part of the win if they had the opportunity. Mike Miller wide to the right side. Willie Galt is wide left. Cockrell will throw. He's facing a blitz. He gets rid of it left side, and there's going to be incomplete at the goal line. And awfully close to contact in the end zone. Cockrell knocked down after he completed uh, through the pass. Ron Hawley, number 19, and I thought for a second there might have been some body contact in that end zone. That's the end of it. It'll be second down and 10. Take a look again, Steve. Alan Cockrell will throw a pass that he will not see fall to the turf. Watch Ron Hawley, number 19, it was snug. <laughs> it was a close fit. Second down, 10. Tennessee trails by nine. All guys adjust defensively. Here's the option play. Chucky Coleman to the nine-yard line. James Herb made the tackle, but Coleman got close to another first down. Iowa came into this football game not expecting the option play. 92, the, tie, the defensive end, Watkett. He goes too far inside. He's not helping a whole lot on the pitch. They've got a soft corner expecting the pass. And that's why Coleman's able to break and make significant yards on the option play. He's got 92 yards on 10 carries now, a fine 9.2 yard average. Coleman had one of 36 yards in the first half. And look at the turnaround. Tennessee realizes the option play really makes it more confusing for them. So that's what they're doing to them and doing a wonderful job of giving Iowa some different things to look at and think about. Well, our ECAC crew will stretch the chain again, and it is short again. 
And John Majors has a decision again. And I think he'll try the same thing again. Again, the point is to be made here that you get the touchdown now, and with the great field goal kicking ability that they have, they feel like the field goal in a tight situation with little time is a better option. They want to get the points now and maybe make it down to a field goal where they don't have to go the length of the field. Second time they have faced fourth down on this drive. Furness again. First down again at the five. And give credit to the guys up front. Kurt Singer, Mike Furness, Glenn Strino, Bill Mayo, and John Matthews. Along with the tight ends, Kelly Jones and Jeff Smith. This is where the offensive line deserves a pat on the back because the back just goes up in the air, but they have to have line surge, and they have to make some bodies go down to give Furnace the ability to go over the top, and that's exactly what happened. Look at Furnace saying that away offensive line. First and goal at the 5, 28-19. Iowa clinging on to a nine-point lead. They're playing their hearts out. What a game. Really turned into a dazzler, and we trust you're enjoying it live on CBS. Option play again. Cockrell hit and drop for a loss. Clay Eulenhake, a senior of Moravia, Iowa. Number 73. Put all 265 pounds into that tackle. That time the option play didn't work because they were unable, the left side of Tennessee's offensive line, to cut him off and to keep him from making the backside play. He came from the backside to make the play, so that is an option play that didn't work. Second and goal from the six. set for the first time today. Double tight ends. Cockrell with the option. He's in trouble. Nate Creer, number 29. Dave Strobel, number 97. And Mike Yakulo, number 39. But Strobel, a junior out of St. Paul, Minnesota, was a key part of that one. When you're playing defense against the option, you want to force the quarterback off his line or track. See, he's off the line of scrimmage. He's getting forced outside. Defense is just stringing the play out, making him go more to the sideline. There it is. Good play, execution of the option play against it. Oh, we got a ball game. I know you're going to come back because we're having some fun today. During halftime of the Cotton Bowl on CBS Sports. Third and goal at the nine. 28-19, Cockrell back to throw, blitz coming, fires it, incomplete. And now there is no choice. We will see Fouad Reves. I would expect. Yep, here comes the Lebanese-Colombian place kicker who kicked only two out of four field goals as a senior linebacker in high school and was on his way to a junior college out in California when a man named Bugsy Engelberg called Vince Gibson's son, who's on the Tennessee staff, and said, this kid can kick it. Well, he's a sophomore now. Johnny Majors gave him a chance. Last year, he was 7 of 15. This year, a phenomenal 27 of 31. His entire family is here to watch him kick. It's up. He's 28 of 32 for the year. Fouad Reves, the 5'11 sophomore, has narrowed the margin. It's 28-22. We got a heck of a finish coming up. Crowd of 60,000, very few of whom have gone home. It's turned into a beautiful night in Atlanta, and we've got a 28-22 ball game. The Peach Bowl live on CBS, and Fouad Reves is getting ready to kick off. And, of course, tomorrow we've got the Cotton Bowl SMU in Pittsburgh, taken by J.C. Love Jordan back to the 10 out to the 21-22 yard line. Tackle is made by Jeff Smith, number 81, and now Iowa needs to get it back together, and I think, Steve, just concentrate on ball control and possession. Yes, they really have lost the momentum, their, their spark that they had. I've heard so many times, I can recall as a player, where you would come in early in the ball game, you controlled it, you gained your dominance in the ball game, and it's very difficult to keep that edge and that poise and that instinct of knowing, hey, we are in control of this football game, and they've lost the edge. They need to regain it right here. Chuck Long has thrown three touchdown passes today, six-point Iowa lead. Motion by Owen Gill out of the backfield, and Long will throw. Looks left side deep for uh, Dronny Harmon and overthrows him at the 40-yard line. Had him open. Had him open. And that will stop the clock with 9.54 remaining in the game. 
The Hawkeyes seven and four this season, picked for seventh. Chuck Long, the sophomore out of Wheaton, Illinois, won the job in spring training. And J.C. Love Jordan brings the play in from the Iowa bench. Hawkeyes outscored Tennessee 21-0 in the second quarter, but they have been hanging on here in the second half. Second down and 10. Owen Gill, number 33, breaks a tackle, breaks another. That will chew some time off the clock and give them a fresh series of downs. His 15th run today for Owen Gill, the sophomore from Brooklyn. A run that looked like it was going to be for two or three yards, but he's going off with his right guard, Gerleman, number 72, and Miller, 79. And he just sifts and turns and looks for seams. Poor tackling by Tennessee. And we've got an injured player, Joe Cozart, number three, is going to hurry off the field now for Tennessee. And he'll be replaced by Doug Parrish, a senior defensive back, number 86. It has been thus far, in large measure, an injury free game. 28 22 our score, 9 25 remaining in the ball game. First and 10, Iowa. And Long changes at the line of scrimmage. Whoops. Reggie White, number 92, a preseason All-American who has been hampered by injuries and has had really a disappointing senior season. But not on this play. Very gutsy. That's Xavier Cook, number five, who's on the blitz right here in front of you in the middle of the screen. He's one of them. Tommy Sims will also be there. And hello, everybody. That makes it second down. 17. A look at Reggie White. Long. Reverse. Owen Gill. Nailed. Dropped for a loss to the 24. Steve Kluge, number 95, the nose guard, made the tackle. He was a walk-on. They called him Pudgy. He earned a scholarship. He's now a solid 268 on a six-foot frame. Here is a play that Iowa has had a lot of success with all day. It's just kind of a drop back and then a reverse play to Gill, number 33. Tennessee's seen it enough. They've made the proper adjustment. Good penetration by the defensive line. Nailed it, Steve Flues, senior. And this will be officially the first third down play for Iowa this half. They had one earlier, but was nullified by a penalty. And they've got third and 23. Long changes again. And he can hardly be heard over the roar of the crowd. He will not get enough for the first down. Reggie Roby will have to put the foot into it. Reggie White again made the tackle with help from Doug Parrish, number 86. Volunteers have held. Roby has kicked it not that well today. Only 26 and 34 yards. And he needs to really uncork one here. Not that terrific. Out of bounds at the 30-yard line. Seven minutes and 17 seconds remaining in the 15th annual Peach Bowl from Atlanta back with the Tennessee possession in a moment. You run a game featuring Eric Dickerson and Greg James. Be here for the Cotton Bowl tomorrow at 1.30 Eastern on CBS Sports. Alan Cockrell, first down, 10, quick screen, right side. And Iowa had this one diagnosed. It was caught by Darrell Wilson, and Bobby Stoops, number 41, was not fooled for a second. That'll keep the clock running with 7.04 remaining. And Tennessee has moved the ball well in this half, Steve. What was his play, Tennessee, coming into this football game was their inability to maintain long drives, and those are exceptional plays. Nine plays, touchdown. Eight plays, touchdown. Eighteen plays. That's ball control. Iowa was the team that was figured on being able to take the ball a long way. They didn't do it when they had to. 6.45 to go in the game, 28-22. Tennessee trails by six. Cockrell, deep down the middle. Oh, incomplete. But did you catch the breeze behind Mike Miller? Oh. I really thought
thought the ball was going to be so far overthrown. Mike Miller, just in the same category of the tremendous speed that Tennessee has. Watch him. It's a post route across the middle. If Alan Cockrell doesn't throw this ball on time, the three world-class sprinters will be so far gone, the ball, they'll have to come back and get the ball. Mike Miller. Threw it into triple coverage, but it was overthrown, and now a third down and nine, and Miller is going to take a rest. Cockrell back to throw. Five-man rush for the Hawkeyes. Into the flat. Caught. Clyde Duncan, number 24. The junior from Oxon Hill, Maryland. Made the catch in front of Devin Mitchell, and Tennessee can move the chains. Was not being able to drop their ends. Their linebackers have to worry about the option play. Now it gives them a little bit more cushion in the secondary other than what they had. They're the play to Duncan, number 24. Clyde Duncan is one of 10 receivers who have caught balls today from Alan Cockrell. They have spread it around. First down at the 44 yard line. Box shows 6 3 remaining in the game. Up the middle she comes. Alvin Tolles, number 44, a sophomore out of Forsyth, Georgia, his first carry today. And Larry Station made the tackle. It's 28-22, 5.45 to go in the ball game. And this has been in large measure in all Tennessee second half. It really has. Again, the involvement of the option play has made all the difference in the world in the second half. And now the defensive backs are even more hard-pressed about worrying about run support. Ball of the 37, second down, three. Cockrell to throw. Left side, caught, Duncan again. Knocked out of bounds by Nate Creer. That's another Tennessee first down. We have seen and are seeing two fine young sophomore quarterbacks in action. Alan Cockrell this time, he takes his two-step drop, he waits for his receiver, Duncan, to open up, look for him, throws the ball on target, good arm strength, throws the ball out there, good completion. 5.18 to go, clock stopped on the out-of-bounds play. 28-22, Tennessee trailing by six. The difference right now is a missed extra point. But, of course, the touchdown would tie it, and the extra point would put them on top. Alvin Tolls again realized when I said that I was uh, I had misspoken <laughs> it's not the difference right now 503 to go in the ball game Johnny Majors 47 year old head coach of Tennessee and Aiden Fry and Bill Brazier trying to get their defense for Iowa regrouped second down and seven with 445 to go in the game three wide receiver offense and a three-man rush for the Hawkeyes Cockrell down the middle incomplete he overthrew Mike Miller, number 88. Cockrell for the day is 18 out of 32 for 194 yards. One of the real keys to Tennessee's success has been Alan Cockrell, the quarterback. One of the things that he had to do when he got his knee injured, that hampered his ability to be a sprint out type passer. Now he has to be a drop back passer. They say his arm is not quite as strong as it needs to be because when you're sprinting out, you can gain body velocity, throw the ball harder. But he's making a transition well and throwing well in drop back situations. Third and seven, quick count. Has time, across the middle, caught. Very close for the first down. That is at the 17 yard line. It's gonna be really close. Catch made by Darrell Wilson, the tackle by Larry Station. And timeout has been called for the measurement. Well, we thought we might have a good one coming in, and it has just about exceeded expectations, Steve. Tennessee has been so impressive in their drives in the second half. They have just taken control of the ball game. Let's see the stretch here. No, not enough. Fourth down. For the third time in the fourth quarter, the Volunteers have to go for it on fourth down. Twice previously, they have given it to Doug Furness. He has gotten on the trampoline and gone up and over the top. You've got to believe the defensive backs and linebackers for Iowa know that. They may be looking for it. What do you think about uh, faking the handoff to Furness? Well, the counter option type play, let him dive over the top and maybe go down the line of scrimmage might be a possibility if you get those defensive ends pinching down. But they'll be thinking about over the top Look at the middle of the Iowa defense. The chess match continues. Fourth and a foot. Furnace again. He got it again. What a compliment to the offense. 
offensive line of Tennessee for him to be able to go three straight times over the top in critical fourth down plays. Doug's getting the trampoline pretty good. That old stocky cowboy knows how to jump. It's all that departure from the Bulls he used to run. Right. He's been in the air a lot. That's right. First downs in this half, 16. They had only three in the first half. At the 15-yard line, Cockrell, half roll, pulls up. Into the flat, incomplete, intended for Chuck Coleman. Stops the clock with 3.44 to go. Junior out of Louisville, Kentucky. And Alan Cockrell, the sophomore from Joplin, Missouri. What's so amazing about those fourth down plays, Vern, is that they've gone generally to the right of the middle and the strength of Iowa's, Iowa's defense. The Brown at nose guard and Bortz at left tackle. Second down and 10. And there's how much time we've got left. It has been Cockrell to Darrell Wilson for long yardage and then Doug Furness on fourth down. Second and 10 at the 15. Two wide receivers right, one left, and Iowa showing a blitz possibility. They're sending four men. Pitch out left side, caught from behind by Chucky Coleman. Drives down the sideline, out of bounds with a possible first and goal. Dave Strobel made the tackle. Let's see where they spot it as we look at the play again. Alan Cockrell was a 59% passer, and he puts the perfect touch on this ball. Lost it over the defensive defender. There it is, Chuck Coleman, number 35, and then just goes down the line of scrimmage, down the boundary, made a big play. Oh, boy. It is not a first down. It's third and one at the seven. 28 to 22 with 338 remaining in the game. Double tight end set for the Volunteers. Jeff Smith and Kelly Jones. Split backs behind Alan Cockrell. On third and one, Cockrell will throw into the end zone. No flag. No flag. It was tipped, and that takes off the possibility of an interference call. Keith Hunter was defending, but the ball was deflected, and once it was tipped, there is no interference. Let's see if we can decide. Looked like it might have been Tony Wonk at number 92. Wonk Steve. at 92 will probably get right in the way. There it is, right there. Hit him right almost on the top of the head. And there Hunter is defending the ball as well, diagnosed by Iowa. For the fourth time in this quarter, it's fourth down. This time it's fourth and a yard. How many times do you go to the well? This time they go with splitbacks, however. And it's the counter lead option, Cockrell. Did not get it. from Wellman, Iowa. The name is James Herb. He wears number 32. It looked like the right side of the offensive line was a little bit slow getting off. They had a blitz that went inside. Wonk at 92 was there. And Herford, number 64. Oh, what a play. Three minutes and 29 seconds remaining in the game. It's not over yet in Atlanta. Back for the final 329. Watch the guard to the right of the center, the left guard, Mike Furness. He comes down the line. He should have blocked right there, the end man on the line of scrimmage. That broke up the play. That was his responsibility in the call, and then the play got spread out. Tennessee stopped. Mike Furness missed the block on Tony Walkett, and Walkett made contact. Iowa handoff, Eddie Phillips, out to the 11 or 12-yard line. Well, it has been a sensational ball game, this 15th annual Peach Bowl. George Crumley, the executive director of the Peach Bowl, has done a terrific job. The president, Bill Weberts, they raise money for the Lions Club Lighthouse and uh, give corneal transplants with the proceeds that they have here. And they have done an outstanding job in getting a sellout crowd of 60,000. Iowa leading Tennessee, 28-22. We've got 2.59 remaining. And a second down and seven for the Hawkeyes. Whoops, Phillips knocked down. It'll be third and eight. I'm thinking about the 22 or 4,000 Iowa fans who came down. Tennessee sold that many. they got to be hearts beating all over Tennessee and Iowa right now and some other parts as the alumni from both schools are watching. I'm thinking of Wally Nicholson, a former charter pilot for the Dallas Cowboys who was an Iowa grad. And I got a friend up in Steamboat named Karen Beauvais who's sitting there with a beanie on her head and waving her Iowa Hawkeye thing and saying, hurry and get this over with. 
Third down and eight. And it's not over. 2-12 to go. And Long will throw it, maybe. Nope. It's fourth down. And if ever Reggie Roby needed to show his number one style, it's going to be right now. Third down and long, you knew that Iowa had to go and throw the football because Tennessee has played extremely tough in the second half on defense. They've been very stubborn with the run. They were in a predictable passing situation. He's played much better pass defense when you know they're going to throw. Roby has averaged 48.1 this year, but today he's kicked it for no longer than 34 yards. And watch this one fly. When he needed it most, he got one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's a 52-yard punt for the All-American senior. It's 28-22, and we've got a minute 56 remaining. <laughs> one minute 56 seconds remaining in the ball game. 28-22. Tennessee's gotten it back once more. They have only been stopped once in this half. And they've got the ball at their own 35-yard line. Split backs behind Allen Cockrell. Five-man rush. He goes into the flat. It's caught. To the 40-yard line. The clock will keep running. Doug Furnish, the fullback. And you see in the lower right-hand corner of your screen how much time remains. Cockrell had called two plays in the huddle. And now timeout has been called by... The officiating crew, they want a new football. Tennessee has one timeout left. And they trail by six with a minute 39 to go. Clock starts again. Second down and four. Incomplete. Johnny Wonkett almost intercepted the deflected pass. A minute 30 remaining. Round number 59. Iowa hoping to go two and two in bowl games. And Tennessee hoping to go 13 and 12. But regardless, these two teams have put on a terrific display. Third down, four. Cockrell into the right flat. Caught by Chuck Coleman. Should have enough for the first down, he does. And they will stop the clock while they move the chain with 1.23 to go in the game. This is where a smart quarterback really comes into play because you're conscious of knowing that when you get a first and, a first and 10, the clock stops. Incomplete pass. Clock stops. Keep telling your offense what you're doing and what kind of time frame you're working with. Cockrell leans out and calls the play at the line of scrimmage. Draw play. Up the middle. Coleman to the 40-yard line. Mike Yakulo made the tackle. Clock is stopped while they move the chains again. So they're really using the clock correctly now. Alan Cockrell right now, the quarterback's talking to everybody and making sure guys get set. There he is, calling the play. 114, clock running, 28-22. Incomplete. Intended for Doug Furness. 69 seconds to go in the game. Want to thank our statistician, Dave Yagi. Joe Cash spotting for Iowa. My wife Nancy working for the Tennessee team today. And it has been a terrific effort, folks. Coming up Sunday, CBS Sports has an NFL doubleheader action on the final day of the regular. Furnish, left side. Incomplete. It bounced. Third and ten with 65 seconds remaining. You know Tennessee is going to throw the football. Third down and ten. You've got to be conscious. I've got to get a first and ten. Not necessarily in this play. Get a chunk of it where they get in a short yardage on fourth down situation if they have to go to fourth down. Third down ten. Clyde Duncan leads. Tennessee had a deficit of 21-7 at the half. They have not led since it was 7-0. Five-man rush for the Hawkeyes. Cockrell in trouble. Fumble! And Tennessee has recovered back at its own 47. Paul Hufford and Dave Brown made the collision. The contact with Alan Cockrell. Iowa. Go ahead, Steve. Iowa had a four-man rush. I think Mark Bortz, number 63, is going to dish out start part of the problem. He's working on John Matthews, 72. That's where the pressure was. 
Fortunately, Tennessee gets back on the ball. Now they've got a monumental problem. Timeout has been called by the Tennessee Volunteers. That's their last one. They have a fourth down coming up when we return. Fourth down, 25. Tennessee, 51 seconds remaining in the game. And it may come down to this one last shot. It'll be the Big Ben play with three speedy wide receivers all going wide to the left side where Alan Cockrell is looking out at them right now. Fourth and 25. Cockrell will not be able to throw it. Strong Joseph, number 96. And the Hawkeye Santa Claus is more than a little thrilled. Again, they had a four-man rush. Strong Joseph is the outside linebacker defensive end. He's working on a smaller back, just not able to contain him, keep him outside off Allen Cockrell. Big play for Iowa's defense. Tennessee out of timeouts. Iowa has 43 seconds to eat up, but we'll see if they can do it in just a moment. 43 seconds remaining in the 15th annual Peach Bowl in Atlanta. And Iowa 43 seconds away from a six-point victory in a hard-fought battle today, Steve. They have fought their hearts out, really had not played well enough in the second half to win it. Couldn't get the big play when they need it. Tennessee cannot stop the clock. We've had a great time here in Atlanta and trust you've enjoyed it. The executive producer of NCAA Sports for CBS is Kevin O'Malley. Our producer today was Jim Silman, John McDonough, our director. Thanks, guys, for a great job in the truck. Robert Matina, our associate producer, Lou Scanna, our field technical manager, Pierce O'Neill, and Susan Spongberg, our broadcast associates, James Anjirami, uh, I'm sorry, and Bob Fieringer, Steve Balachek, and the rest of the crew. I practiced that before the game began, and the time is winding down. Five seconds to go in the ball game. The champions of the 15th annual Peach Bowl in Atlanta, the Hawkeyes of Iowa, and their head coach, Aiden Fry. Our Chevrolet most valuable players for the Iowa Hawkeyes, Chuck Long, 19 of 26 for 304. And for Tennessee, Alan Cockrell, he was 22 of 41 for 223 yards. A check in the amount of $1,000 will be donated to each school's general scholarship fund to assist students in all chosen fields of academic endeavor. Isn't that a great scene? Johnny Majors and Hayden Fry. Now this is Vern Lundquist for Steve Davis saying so long from Atlanta Fulton County Stadium where once again the final score, the Iowa Hawkeyes 28, the Tennessee Volunteers 22. Al Grady has resigned from the Iowa City Press Citizen in a dispute with the paper's new management. Iowa City's mayor is proclaimed next Wednesday Al Grady Day to honor him for his role in the city. And Johnson County reporter Jill Kelly reports Grady's departure is also drawing fire from some of the paper's readers. Um, well, Iowa beat Kentucky, Kentucky's basketball team, um, probably in 1956. Al Grady's old columns decisions. spark a lot of Iowa Hawkeye is, uh, memories. He's written sports columns at the Press Citizen for 36 years until he resigned two weeks ago. Grady says his resignation follows a disagreement over his writing style with the paper's new management. Press Citizen officials declined to comment on camera, but in a published announcement, editor Dick Field says they couldn't agree whether an effort to improve writing at the Press Citizen should include Grady's column. I decided, particularly at age 60, that I wasn't willing to change and try to adapt a new style or uh, please a new managing editor, please one person, when I think I have done a pretty good job of pleasing the readers over the years. I want to thank you for making my decision to stop purchasing the Press Citizen a simple one. This is just one of dozens of letters to the editor from Al Grady fans who are upset with the newspaper's decision. Earl Murphy wrote a letter to the editor. He says the newspaper's action is a kick in Grady's face. Al Grady has the great ability to I would call it uh, common sense journalism. Uh, he writes about one uh, uh, phase uh, of sports, and that's the Iowa Hawkeyes, and he does that very, very well. Grady says he's had several offers from other print and broadcast media, but he says he's taking a couple of weeks off to spend in the garden and with his companions before he decides what he wants to do next. He says while he may not know where he'll be working in the future, he knows he'll be at the Hawkeye games as usual. If Iowa didn't have football and basketball, I'd move to California. 
<laughs> because the weather's nice, you know. It's tough, but the Hawkeyes keep me here. Jill Kelly, 2 Action News, Iowa City. Some Al Grady fans are planning a tribute to him at the University Athletic Club in September. I hope the weather is this nice when the Hawkeye football season starts, Dave. It's